Hey everybody. Welcome back to the stream. How's everybody doing? It's freaking winter. It's cold outside. It sucks. Hey Roger. Sorry I'm coming on a little bit late today. But man, I was so disorganized. I don't know, like all my tools are scattered all over the place and uh, yeah, it was just a mess. And I couldn't find any tools. There were parts everywhere. And I just had to get organized for a little bit. I had to clean the shop. I had to clean the damn shop. What's going on in Roger's world? Anything new? Have a good, uh, well, I don't know. I don't think you had a Thanksgiving, but we had a little holiday here in the US a day or so ago. Or what is it? No, damn, almost a week ago it was Thanksgiving. Wow, time's flying, guys. I got a ton, a ton of stuff to be working on. Um, a ton of parts came in the mail the other day. Uh, I got another round of parts coming. Should be here on Saturday. And the only thing that I don't have right now to finish up this apocalypse bike are tires. I haven't bought the tires, tubes, and rim strips yet. That is the last purchase that I need to make. And then we're golden. <laughs> it's going to be great. So... I think the thing I want to tackle tonight for sure is I'm going to rewind a little bit. Remember these? Remember these bars? Well, I went and made an executive decision. And let me show you what I did. Let's uh, hop over to camera A. I'll give you a look what's going on here. Pardon the tippiness. But my God, I fell in love with these black bars. What do you think of those? So I think what we're gonna do is we are going to <laughs> strip these. All right, we're gonna strip these, pull the switches back out of these, which will be fun, but it should go pretty quick. I don't think we'll have to rewire any of that stuff today. Uh, mostly what I wanna do today is I wanna get these bars ready. Look at how damn cool that, that is going to look, guys gonna look beautiful what do you think what do you think of these black bars they're kind of what, 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 what were they called super bars or something like that got them on ebay but here's the project kind of for tonight is that these are meant to be wired up with all of the wiring for the switches kind of going on the outside of the bar and i'm just not really a fan of that i think that'll look kind of sloppy on this really classy this really classy looking motorcycle, you know? And these black bars need to have the wiring going through the pipe, all right? That's kind of the main goal tonight. So what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to drill and cut the holes for the slots, okay? Now, in order to do that, what I did, what I did was is I had a junk set of bars, okay? And the placement of this stuff is really precise. So what I did was I actually cut the bars. Here's the end of the bar here. And I salvaged the cutout and the locator hole here, okay? And I did that for each side. And interestingly enough, guys, um, these are slightly, slightly different. They're offset just a little bit, not much, um, but just a hair right? So I compared the two. So I decided, okay, I'm going to have a right side and a left side. I'm just going to do them both this way. But this is an old set of bars that they were all bent uh, beyond belief. They, they were something I was never going to use. And I figured, you know, let's make myself a couple of little templates that I can use to really accurately put the holes inside of those black bars. That's kind of the goal. Roger, not much going on. Just deciding what I'm going to resurrect from my selection of dead bikes. Nothing exciting, mainly scooters. A neighbor's bike, an old Honda C90. Man, those C90s, whether there's a C50, the little scooters, I wouldn't mind getting into those. Um, those look really, really fun, actually. So the plan is, is to cut these holes into those black bars so that we can get the wiring inside the bars because... I don't know, it just, you know, taking, you know, um, zip, zip ties and, you know, just putting wiring on the outside of these amazing black bars, it's going to suck. 
So the one thing I did do on this, which is worth noting, um, is that I did flatten them just a little bit. See how they're not quite round anymore? I flattened them, just smashed them a little bit so that they'll fit around the outside of these bars. And then I can just clamp them on there and I can drill out those holes. So that's, that's really the goal. Now, the other thing I was kind of thinking about doing tonight was recording a video about doing this while I'm live streaming. I don't know if you guys would find that interesting or not, but kind of let you behind the scenes a little bit on how I'm actually making all those videos. Um, I thought that could be kind of fun. If you'd be interested in seeing that, let me know. And I can set up the stuff, give you guys a, a look at how I'm actually doing this. Now, it might not be quite as engaging as other streams, but, you know, I get messages from people all the time, you know, uh, saying, oh, I thought about making a video about this, what they were working on on their project and, and stuff. And I was like, huh, I wonder if, if I could just kind of show people, I don't know, my method, if you will, um, for making, making videos. So, hey, Brian. Live your best life. I agree, man. Uh, tonight we're drinking kind of low octane stuff. We've got a Founders here all day IPA. Session ale, nothing crazy. Not going to hit too hard. Can literally pretty much drink this stuff all day. So we got a little beer and we can do that. So I don't know. I'm kind of thinking, God, do I want to go through all that effort of filming a video? Because I do think this video would be super relevant. That is the CL right behind me. I'll give you a I'll give you a look. That's a CL for sure. And I don't know. Let's take a little look see at it. A lot of progress has been done on this motorcycle. Front end's pretty much all done. Forks are in. Bucket signals, reflectors, all of that's in. Uh, I ended up doing the roller bearings in the top as well. Let me get it back over here. And there we go. There's that pinstriping job, guys. Man, that was, that was actually a lot of fun uh, to do. I really enjoyed uh, doing the pinstripe deal. I thought it came out really, really good, and I'm loving the silver color. But man, as soon as I saw, as soon as I saw these black bars, and I just started to think about all these black elements on this bike, I could not do it. I couldn't not do it, honestly. So, live streams are a lot more fun than the videos. Yeah, so here's the thing. <laughs> I agree. I love doing the live streams. Um, but here's the other thing the live streams, um, you know, don't generate the views for the channel necessarily. So, it's, it's kind of a, I gotta do the videos because that's kind of how the channel thrives, right? By regular video uploads and stuff. So I'm really looking at the live streams as a community thing for us to just kind of hang out here and, and, and chat and you know talk about what the hell we're building. Um, but I need the videos in order to just stay relevant and, and keep the thing growing because I do have to say, guys, the channel uh, went uh, to 5,000. It's over 5,000 subscribers now which, uh, if you remember the previous live streams, I had this little ticker, this countdown, uh, countdown to 5,000. And uh, my goal was the end of the year, 1231 was the goal to get to 5,000. And shoot, man, I'm, I'm, I was more than a month early on getting to 5,000. So thank you for the support, number one. Um, but I wanna keep that going. And, and what I noticed is, is that when I stopped making videos, like regular videos every week, things started to tail off a little bit and the channel growth uh, wasn't going up. So I absolutely need to keep doing videos. So I don't know, it'd be kind of fun, uh, at least give you guys a glimpse as to how I'm doing this stuff. Let's try it. I mean, live our best life, right? That's what we're doing. So this tripod will be bronzed one day because I used this tripod to shoot the entire 1972 CL3. 50 video okay now that piece was really really key to getting all those shots um, having a nice stable platform to shoot with um, and then believe it or not guys I shot the whole darn thing on my iPhone the uh, that whole series was shot on iPhone and edited on iPhone 
uploaded from iPhone. And uh, the only thing I really ever had to do was go on my laptop and like optimize the, the videos and do all, the, all this stuff. So, uh, Brian, it's a good way to engage with your viewers and tell us where you're headed with builds. Absolutely. I, I, I'm committed to the live streams for sure. Um, I'm just trying to find kind of a, a little bit of a balance between live streams and actually getting that content out there because some of the, the, the polishing videos, uh, the chrome spray paint video, all that stuff, like, man, they've got a ton of views, um, like a ton of views. They're, the, the one is over 300,000, something like that. So some of them are doing really well. Um, and I just want to keep it all going. So I'm just trying to find that happy balance. Now, hey, another thing um, to keep in mind is uh, the Keep On Wrenching community group, okay? So if you're on the stream now and you haven't joined the, the community group, uh, please do that because um, this thing's amazing. <laughs> I, you know, I just kind of let this thing roll. Um, oh, Julie Haven is live right now. She's an amazing musician. Uh, if you want to go check out some music, not now, after my stream, of course. Um, but man, we're, it's just such a supportive group and I can be really hands-off and you guys are just contributing uh, the things that you're doing, and I can I'll keep you guys updated on things. So, um, just uh, amazing. But I do want to call out one certain post here if I can find it because it was extremely impressive. Oh, who's that? Oh, George. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. The thread's breaking. That's always a miserable, miserable feeling. You're going deep. Dave's going in deep on that. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't blame you, Brian. That's all good, but that's an option. I'm going to try to keep it, keep it rolling on YouTube for sure. But where are this? David, this effort that you did to get this bolt out for your oil pump was an amazing story. I would love to turn this into like a, a blog post or something is what I was thinking of doing because, man, you guys are doing a lot of cool stuff on the group. And the way that the group really came together, like look at this, 10 comments of people coming in, supporting, giving suggestions, and a lot of times, honestly, just saying it'll be okay, it'll all work out. But at the end of the day, check it out, David got that thing out. That was a brutal one. That was like almost like a dramatic movie happening for all of us. Uh, and he got that thing out. But yeah, what a cool story um, to be able to go and do that I thought that was just uh, amazing but yeah the keep on wrenching group is great um, so like for somebody like Brian who doesn't mess around with Facebook that's totally fine because um, let me pull this up guys I've got just kind of my landing page up for keep on and I've got some big ideas coming uh, for this okay um, this is just a splash page but most importantly I'm gonna to put together a monthly newsletter um, where I'm just gonna feature a ton of different things, um, kind of formatting all this stuff out. But man, if you wanna kind of stay in the loop and you're not on social or you are on social and you just wanna stay in the loop, uh, make sure to go sign up for that email list and then uh, I'll get a monthly email going out. I'm gonna start doing that in January. So we're gonna have that. We can talk about builds, we can do all kinds of stuff. Um, but I've got a lot of ideas and then check out the, uh, See, can I do that? No. Uh, the logo's in place. <laughs> I kind of dig the way the logo came out. I wonder if I can just open this. Open a new tab. Yeah, there's the Keep On Wrenching logo, guys. What do you guys think of that? I kind of dig it. Nice and simple, and uh, it's, uh, it kind of expresses. I, I also like that uh, it's got a six-sided uh, uh, wrench, which I, I think are, are very, very good. Um, so yeah, that's it. I think I'm going to roll. I'm going to roll with this keep on wrenching thing. And uh, that's going to be kind of our look. That's kind of what, what I'm going for on the channel. So let me know your thoughts on that. Uh, some of the things that I want to do with this site, um, it's a lot. It's a lot of things uh, that I want to do with the site. So I, I want to do a small little eBay store. Um, where I, I have a ton of parts, extra parts. I have people reaching out looking for parts um, and make them, you know, really affordable. Uh, some of them I was thinking I could even like do the work, clean them up. You need a set of side covers or a side cover polished up. I could make those available uh, in the eBay store. Uh, I want to feature the builds, okay? So I want to do kind of a history 
of each one of the builds, the 1970 CB, the gold one, the 72 Red CL. Uh, I want to showcase the Apocalypse bike for sure. We've got the 1968 CB350. Um, we've got, uh, we've got uh, uh, a ton of content there uh, to be posting up. Uh, I also am <laughs> kind of a, a fun project I've been working on is building out a landing page for resources. And uh, I'm pretty much doing um, everything that I've learned, I'm compiling into this kind of landing page that you're gonna be able to, to find a bunch of resources. Um, the, the, the famous Honda Twins book uh, will be available there <laughs> in PDF form if you, if you want a copy. I'll make that available for download, so that'll be really cool. Um, but then I also um, ha have just some other things. I want to work on some partnerships. I had a, had a company reach out to me uh, with some cleaning pro products. Um, they sent me a bunch of free samples, and they're like, hey, try this stuff out. And, you know, if some of that stuff takes off as well, that's a great way to support the channel, do some builds, and uh, do all that. Now, the other thing I'd like to do, uh, with you guys' permission, of course, would be to feature your builds on, you know, people in the Keep on, Keep on Wrenching community showcasing their builds, some of their challenges and, and, and things that they've done. So uh, I, I think it could be a lot of fun. And it's just a matter of me sitting down at the keyboard and finishing this thing up. Right now, it's just a basic landing page uh, for you to go sign up. So you can just go and do that at uh, keeponwrenching.com. I can go back over there real quick. God, I, I love this live streaming setup. It's so awesome. Um, right now, it's just real simple. Just keep up to date live. <laughs> what's going on everywhere and uh, yeah it's gonna be neat it's gonna be neat but uh, I tell you what when I got the logo back in um, I was like okay this is actually starting to become something it kind of has an identity now um, which is really 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 fun I mean and, and on the uh, Facebook group as well people are sharing all of these amazing builds that they're that they're doing so um, that's it's just so damn cool. Like, I think Terrence just got his done, or he was really close to getting it done. I'm not sure if he's in the chat tonight or not. Uh, but let me see if I can find that. Yeah, oh, there's the tank he was working on. Uh, he was really close. There it is. No, that's, no, that's a different one. Anyway, it's a green CV that he was working on. No, it's the purple one. It's this purple one. That's it. Ah, anyway, go over to to the to the site and get on that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. So I don't know. I just want to see how it goes. You know, Roger, I really like the six sided um, uh, wrenches better. I know that you lose a little bit of like you know angle, you know, in tight spots and things like that. But for the most part, on these. I, I think that the, the, the six-sided wrenches prevent rounding off a lot more than, than some of the other ones. So i um, kind of excited about that. So let's see. Nice. New subscriber. We already got a new subscriber. Look at that. Fires right through on my Apple Watch. That's amazing. So let's get to work, guys. Let's, uh, enough of me jamming, talking, talking nothing. Um, we got to get going here. So... Do I make the video or do I not make the video? I think it could be kind of fun. Let's try this. Again, I just shoot everything on iPhone. That, that's it. It's all I shot. And the biggest thing I had to remember was to always wipe the lens. Because the lens would always have a big fingertip, uh, finger, fingerprint on it. And it would always look like garbage. So, I don't know. Let's let you, let you in. Uh, the videos usually don't take too long to do. It's a pretty easy process. Um, always make sure you're in portrait mode or uh, in uh, landscape mode and uh, have your video on, lock and load. So sometimes I did hand, just handheld stuff and try to be really, really careful with the camera. Um, but other than that, I don't know, let's do a dry run. I'll try and do a dry run for you right now to see what we're doing. So try and give you a, a look-see at what's going on. So here we go. Here's how I filmed the videos, guys. Hey guys, at BV Matson here. How about those black bars? I am absolutely in love with these black handlebars for the CL350. And uh, 
we got a problem. Because if you remember, we already put the switches and ran the wires on a nice chrome set of bars. The only thing is, I'm in love with these black bars, all right? I am in love with them, and we're gonna need to do a swap on this, all right? Couple challenges in this, and let's take a look at those right now. So the way to make videos, in my opinion, um, really fast is to just limit as much editing as you possibly, possibly can. So I just shoot in short clips, end it, and, and, and do one, uh, like one or two seconds after everything, turn it off, and that way you can compile everything really, really quick. So my next shot here, um, obviously, is gonna be back over here on the bike and try to find a good lighting angle. So the challenge is, is that these bars that I picked up off eBay for like $30, I think, um, they don't have any of the holes drilled in them so that we can run the wiring internally. That's a problem because on this beautiful motorcycle, I certainly don't want to be running wiring outside and using a bunch of cheesy zip ties, all right? We got to drill the holes. Now, there is a locator pin here that is marked on the bars, which will help us figure out where we need to go. But I want to be a little bit more precise than that. So there's another shot. Yeah, just like that. Brian, I, I totally agree with you. People should hit that like button. Um, helps a lot. The likes matter a ton. The comments matter a ton. The shares, like... It's, it's amazing to see like which videos take off and which, which ones don't. But I don't want to make this all about videos. I want to keep moving forward with this project because we've got a serious, uh, serious, serious project. So for this video, I might just run over here, grab another set of bars, okay? And I'll just show people what's going on here. And I also, yeah, I need to drill that center hole too. I forgot to grab that. That'll be easy to go and get, but now let's do another take. So here you can see the, uh, the holes that are drilled in the handlebars, and it's just a slot. It's, it's nothing crazy, but it is precisely located. Now, these bars are in one piece, and I was trying to figure out a way, like maybe using a micrometer and measuring and doing all these things, and you know, trying to transfer some of the stuff onto the bars so I could cut it accurately. But I did just happen to have an old set of bars that I knew I wasn't going to use again. So what I ended up doing was, is I cut them off, split them in half, shaped them out just a little bit so they'll fit over the new bars. And I can actually use this as a drilling template to be super, super accurate. Now on this end, this is the end of the handlebars. So all I have to do is line that up, clamp it in place, grab my drill, <laughs> and go to town. The locator pin hole that's already on these handlebars is really going to help to align kind of the, the up and down on that. It's going to be really, 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 really simple. So um, yeah, I thought that was kind of a cool MacGyverized kind of a hack to just do it. They're just basically metal templates now that we can use to drill these out. And there you go. So there, we've got those, those clips in the bag. And now we can kind of move on to getting to work. Now, the other thing <laughs> that I like to get into here um, are just like little time lapses and things like that. So the next shot, I'm just thinking through this in my head right now. Like, okay, what's the next shot? I'll just do this. All right, before we can get to work, we got to get the bars off. All right, so now, the, now I'm sitting here like this. Then this is when you grab your tripod. And what I, having a, a nice, sturdy tripod, and uh, it, it's a lifesaver, man. It's, it makes your videos better. I, I'm a content guy. I love creating content, obviously. Otherwise, I, I probably wouldn't do a lot of this stuff. But uh, I'm just gonna line this up and get kind of a cool, Time lapse. So I'm just going to go to time lapse mode on my phone. And I'm going to do this. And now I'm just time lapsing myself. Oh, let me turn you guys over here so you can see what's going on a little bit better. Now I'm just time lapsing myself taking these bolts out. 
all right? I'm not gonna put you guys through all the pain of uh, making me do this. I know some of my earlier videos, man, I, I, every single wrench turn, I, I did not edit. I didn't edit anything in my early videos. Um, and I, I think that was a little, little, little painful for some of you to do sometimes, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm just doing a time lapse now of, of pulling off these handlebars. And I just had this kind of sitting in place. So I'm, I'm not like Herculean strong here. Um, it was just very, very loosely kind of in place. And then this time lapse will just kind of get edited in to the whole flow as well. So there we go. I'll pull the bars off and I can stop my time lapse. Boom, done. Okay, no fancy equipment, any of that kind of stuff. So then I can grab this, drop this down, and then we can go back to the table and keep on working or keep on wrenching. <laughs> That's what I should be saying, right? Oh, here we go. Yeah, tell us more about parts. Yeah, parts, man, I got lots of parts. Uh, I probably got two motorcycles worth of of parts and then triples and you know four of some I, I, I have a lot of stuff it's really accumulating quickly um, let's see uh, different uh, I meant the size difference on the logo six-sided hexagonal spanners oh gotcha 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 Kevy uh, Kev hey Brian been sub for quite a while and I'm impressed with how far you've progressed in both wrenching skills and your content creation thanks dude I was a complete noob when I started out. I mean, I'm not a total noob. I built one bike, um, but that was a beginner's lesson all itself. And the 72 really helped me um, kind of understand these things. And I'm actually, I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about what I'm working on on these bikes. So, man, Kevy, I really, really appreciate that. Glad you're enjoying the content. So, appreciate the sub, man. The subs are, are awesome. I, lo I love waking up in the morning and and just looking at the at the sub change and see what videos hit, what were people watching, and you know, and it's also fun just to see what uh, like 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 what videos are, are are starting to climb because it's it's pretty crazy how like one gains a little traction, it gains traction, it moves really really fast. Okay, so let's get in position here. I need to grab a couple little clamps to do this. So I'm gonna grab this and this. Got my, I love these quick grips. I think those are fantastic. And then I'm gonna grab a rag because I don't have two of these little, uh, little grippy ones. But anyway, so all I'm doing is I'm shooting off my front camera so I can see what's going on. I'm gonna give this, gotta flip it, boom. Down in here, looking at the table. Get this handlebar set out of the way, just like that. And I need a power drill with a battery. With a battery is gonna be good. It'll be kind of fun to uh, shoot this and then edit it up, upload it later. You guys can kind of see how it all comes together. All right, so we're sitting here with our bars. We've got our parts, or we've got our templates that we cut out. Oh, what? Wrong camera. Wrong camera. We got our templates that we got cut out. Man, this is like a, a inception thing going on here a little bit right now. But I'm going to pop this off. Just like that. And we're going to do this. All right, let's get started. You're going to need a power drill, and you're going to need some really, really sharp bits, okay? Uh, I picked up this Milwaukee set, Cobalt. Uh, haven't used them yet. They are brand freaking new, and they better do the job because the Cobalt is a very, very good drill bit. <laughs> We've got our templates, and then you're also going to need a uh, couple of clamps. I got these, uh, you know, quick grip, and I've got a C clamp here. Um, but basically, all we have to do is get these clamped on the bars where we're going to drill our holes. Yeah, I did this video, I don't know if you guys have seen on the channel, where I installed a peephole in a, in a door. This is a video I made, I don't know, probably five years ago. And uh, kind of was kind of the beginning of all of this. It was kind of me just trying to figure it out. I got to tighten up the chair. Things dying over here. Yeah, Terrence, it's too cold. 
it's cold. <laughs> it's it's no fun in the garage. I do have a heater in 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 my garage, um, but it, it's it takes a special effort uh, in order to go and do that. All right, so let's keep doing this. Let's keep rolling. And I'll get my drill bit. So it's just like staging. It's all just like staging shit. So I got this bit here. There. So, okay, shouldn't have pulled that out. So here we go. So I got my shot right here. All right, let's see what we got. All right, we've got a couple of uh, holes that we've got to drill. We've got a big one here. I'm going to go with my biggest bit, biggest bit right here. And wouldn't you know, that actually fits almost perfectly might have to grind it out just a little bit or maybe not with the with the dremel but i think this is going to be a really good start uh for getting uh these holes drilled now so we're going to use this one and then we need to figure out what size this um alignment pin is so just simply you know kind of dive into your tools and start figuring out which one it's going to be that one's a little bit small. I think we go up one more size. See if that one goes there. This is an absolute perfect match. So we've got our two bits that we're gonna need for this job. Now, another thing that could make things a little bit helpful as well would be to get yourself a nice punch and a hammer so we can uh, drill straight. And there you go. So that's in the can and that's just sitting there. Let's see if I can not screw this up. Kevy Kev started recording, vin uh, restoring vintage Hondas about four years ago. Nice. Self-taught from manuals in the web. Just finished my fourth restoration this year. Congratulations, man. I'm totally self-taught as well. Um, I watched a ton of common motor videos, um, you know, to get started. And uh, the, the reason why I kept going uh, yeah, Roger, uh, stick with me, Roger, stick with me, we got this. Um, the, uh, the, the whole video series kind of came out of the, the, the videos that weren't out there from other, other people, other YouTubers. Um, so that, that's why I started making all those videos. Um, Cabby Cab, your content's going to go a long way helping people get their hands dirty for the first time. And maybe we can save just a few more of these increasingly rare treasures. Yeah, dude, that, that is one of the driving passions, 100% is saving these old bikes. Um, I absolutely love them. I got addicted to it. As soon as I, I started working on my first bike, I knew it was something that I was going to be, be, be doing for a long, long time. I hope they do help people. And based on the, the feedback I'm getting, they, they are helping people quite a bit. Um, I should be in my garage. Yeah, it's too cold. Brian's video is a great resource. Thanks, Terrence. And then Roger, start with a smaller pilot hole and go up in size. Yeah, totally right, man. Totally right. But these are my holes. These, these are the ones that I'm going to focus on right now. So, all right. So now we got to set up the shot. I don't need the drill just yet. So we'll put that over there. All right. <laughs> Disclaimer. I've never done this before. So this could be totally botched and terrible. Who knows? But that's just kind of how I roll. I just kind of go with it and, uh, and, and try to get this figured out. I just, I cannot live with the fact that we would have uh, wires zip tied to the outside of this. After all the work <laughs> that we're putting into this darn thing, um, it would just be miserable. Miserable, miserable, miserable. Um, I, I, would just, I would just hate it. I would just hate it the whole time. Every time I would look at it, I think I would just be sad and uh, be angered, be angered. Maybe not angered, but it would be frustrating. So now I'm just going to position my tripod, find myself a good location. Do you guys mind this camera angle? Or I could swap you over. I could do kind of a shoulder over shoulder kind of a thing here. Um, kind of taking a look at this. That's kind of a neat shot. That's actually kind of fun. I kind of dig that one. And I just need to remember to be looking at the right one. I'm gonna actually tr give myself a little bit of overhead light. Lighting, when you're shooting with iPhones, it's really important to have really good light. Um, it's probably the most important um, to get good, get video results. So I'm just positioning my piece so we can see it well in the camera. And this is my right side. 
So I want to grab my right. I did mark these when I, when I pulled it off. So um, let's do this. All right, next step, I'm going to grab my template. I'm going to grab my right side template because if you look at these closely, they are staggered just a little bit. Your left and your right holes aren't exactly in the same spot. One's a little bit closer to, to, closer to the end. Um, they are the same size, it appears, um, but they are located a little bit differently. So when I split those bars, I did mark which side was right and which side was left. Now here you can see the locator hole that's in, this, in the new bars. And all I'm gonna have to do here is lay this down on the end, line this up just like that. And what I can do, hold that in place. I've got it aligned with my existing, you know, the, the existing hole here. And I can take my, my quick grip, if I can get it aligned properly, and just clamp this thing in. Give that a nice turn. And we're just gonna clamp this on. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take another clamp and get this over on the edge here too. So it looks like this side's a little bit off. So I'm just gonna rotate it. Rotate the piece just a little bit. Get it right where you want it and then tighten it down. Just like that. Beauty, beauty, look at that. Let me give you a closer look at that. And there you go. That's all we're doing now, right? And grab another shot. And there you can see where the, uh, the original hole in the black bars is. We're just gonna align this. I'm gonna clamp this down right in this area. So we're gonna move our locator hole just a little bit, but it's gonna be perfect for where they were on the original bar. So this should work out well. And we actually have a hole that we can start with to uh, start drilling this part out. We can just re-drill this with the bit that we've already got. We've got a great guide that's gonna help us make a perfect hole. Yeah, I was saying like when I made the, uh, when I made this peephole video, which does really well too. In that video, I constantly was saying, you know, and now you can drill your hole for your peephole. And people laughed a lot at that because it just sounds absurd, right? So, okay, I think I just need to clamp this together now. Like guys, I'm like literally kind of idiot savanting my way through all of this. <laughs> it's just kind of how it goes. I want to make sure I'm not missing any chats. Cool, Roger's the last one in, good. Love it, love it. All right, so now on this one, I wanna be a little careful. Uh, I don't wanna scuff anything up. So I'm just gonna do this, pan up just a little, and we'll do this. All right, with that first clamp in place, I'm gonna grab just a little bit of a rag so I don't scuff up my bars when I get this thing kind of cinched into position. I'm gonna position this this way so it gives me a little bit more room to work. So I'm gonna just move this over. Let's see, let's get this into position. And ideally this should suck this whole piece down so that I can do this template drill in good spot. So I just gotta pull that down just a little bit and get this in there. I, I do want it to be kind of firmly in place. I definitely don't want my template to be moving around. So we're doing that. Oh, I slipped off. Round bars, got to be real careful with that. A little, I think I got a little piece of rubber or something on the bottom end of this would work really, really well. But anyway, that's how you do it. So whenever I would like struggle with something, that's usually when I would like just make an edit and then I could just move over to time lapse and uh, take care of business that way, just to keep the video moving just a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna go like this. So now I'm recording a time lapse, just like that. I just changed it on my phone. And now I'm recording the whole thing. It's all there, people can still see it. But now I can kind of use, you know, take my time. I don't have to rush. Cause sometimes when you're working, you know, when you're filming stuff, it, 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 things feel 
things just naturally feel kind of rushed. It's like the camera's rolling. I don't want to make a four hour video. Uh, brevity is really, really important. I wish I had just another one of these, um, these quick grips. It would be pure gold. But I think that's going to be fine. I don't think that's going to move too bad. As long as it doesn't push it off. I think we should be good. All right. So I'm going to go back to video on my phone, which is, which is pretty simple to do, right? If I could get it to go back. Oh, my God. As I'm getting older, my eyes just suck. It's getting really annoying, even when I wear glasses. But then because of COVID, I haven't even been able to go get my eyes checked here in a while either. All right. So now we're back in position. It's all just setting up these shots. That takes freaking forever. Like I was telling you guys, like everything took three times as long to do um, making the video. So I feel really good about this because I actually already have kind of a, a pilot hole there. So I'm just going to grab the drill, get this in position. And I'm going to go for this big bit. I'm going to try to just kind of get that done right here. So let's get you back on this side so you can kind of see what's going on. And hopefully this goes smoothly. We'll see how it goes. All right, let's drill our first hole. Uh, luckily, you know that uh, the, the uh, placement pin uh, hole is gonna be a perfect pilot hole for drilling this. Get your drill in forward position. Let's push this through nice and easy. A little bit of oil or something may what would help. Not mandatory. This is actually going very, very easily. I'm not going crazy with it. And there we are. We're out. Clean this out. There we go. First hole in. Now, while I've got this in position, because now I know that, uh, that uh, I'm in the right place, I'm going to go ahead and switch my drill bits out. And I'm gonna go ahead and drill that, that locator pin in this right now. Just in case the, uh, the just in case that my, my template falls off, um, I don't have to worry about that. So on this one, I should be able to just drill this right out. A little bit of oil would be helpful, but this stuff's pretty good. I mean, it's not like the quality of steel that we have on these uh, on these old bikes, you know. It's uh, kind of soft. So there you go, there's another shot, just like that, doing that. And now we can kind of start diving into this. Now I've got a couple options here. I could just grab my Dremel and start diving in here, you know, and just start cleaning all this stuff out, which I may actually just try to do because the, 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 the template's there and I have a really good cutting bit to be able to do that. Um, I know I had my Dremel. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I did with it. I brought it out special just for this video. What the hell did I do with it? What the hell did I do with my Dremel? My Dremel was here and now it is gone. Well, that's really annoying because the Dremel is key to today's episode. What the hell did I do with it? Do you guys ever have these moments in your shot? Oh, I just remembered something. Guys, check this out. Look what I picked up today. Look what I picked up today. Facebook Marketplace. I'm really excited about this. Ta-da! Look at that. I got myself a proper six-inch buffer. It's got a longer throw on it because I was trying to use the... You know, just my regular six inch bench grinder to do polishing and it did a good job, but this popped up at an incredible price. And um, look at this, it's even on a cart with wheels and everything. Um, I got this proper, proper buffer, which is freaking awesome. Uh, can't wait to start using that. That's kind of a nice, a nice, uh, I don't know. It's just cool. <laughs> I got myself a proper buffer. I got a grinder. And I got a buffer and everything is right as rain. Anyway, 
shiny object. What the hell did I do? Ah, oh, my Dremel. There it is. I see it. So you grab myself a set of safety glasses as well. And we can keep kind of going back to work here. Whoa. Okay, well, well, we got some more comments here. Uh, coincidentally, Kevy Kev, my latest restore was a 1970 CB350. Fun to watch you go through everything I did. Yeah, man, I love that 70, but I, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the 70 can't hear me right now. Um, this freaking apocalypse bike behind me is very, very quickly becoming uh, kind of my favorite. I'm, I'm hoping the thing goes really, really well. Uh, drill a hole next to it and file it out. File it out. I'm trying to embrace power tools. <laughs> I'm going to see how this goes. I'm going to see if this actually works out. Um, this metal's a little soft, so I feel like it should go okay. I could drill it out just a little bit more, though. You are right. Let's actually do that. It'd be less Dremel work to do. So I'm going to go ahead and change my bit. Just like that. All right. And, oh yeah, I'm filming a video right now. That's right. And the other thing that helps as well is to change camera angles, like while you're working on stuff. Just it's, I, I found that it just adds a little bit more variety instead of just the same shot over and over and over again. So I just change it just a little bit. It doesn't have to be dramatic, uh, just a little bit. So, okay, we drilled that out. That was beauty, that was beauty. All right, now we just need to drill a small pilot hole on the other side so we can kind of fill out this entire gap. So I've installed a small kind of, just a very, very small drill bit. Um, I could tap this if I, like, you know, give it a little ping mark, but I think this should go pretty easily. So I'm just going to go eyeball this up. It's a little tricky doing it sideways. There we go. Don't need much. Don't need much. This is really hard to do sideways. <laughs> Get your hand out of the way so you don't drill your hand. That's also important. And there we go. There's a nice little pilot hole. Let me give you a closer look at what I just did there. Bam. Grab the phone. Spin it around. Bam. And there you can see I've got a small pilot hole right here to the left of our main hole there. I'm going to drill this out with that larger size drill bit. And then we'll be able to go up and clean it all out with a Dremel. Just like that. Put my phone back on the little stand. And uh, what do I got to do next? <laughs> I got to put the big drill bit in. That's what I got to do. So it's like trying to stay as fluid as possible so you don't kind of lose track where you are. Um, videos get really challenging when you start messing up. And you start making a lot of mistakes as if you guys watch a lot of a lot of my videos I, d I just left the mistakes in because i figured like everybody's probably making the same mistakes and i mean it's just kind of part of that whole that whole process so all right so let me get my camera angle double check my angle give it just a Give it just a smidge of a turn. See, I'm not even hardly moving my camera. I'm just moving it ever, ever, ever so slightly. Sometimes just lowering elevation works too. And I'm really just showing this to you guys because like, you don't need a ton of equipment in order to you know, make fairly, fairly good content or at least useful content. Like Anybody can do this stuff. Man, this is one squeaky damn chair. Jesus. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, with my larger drill bit installed, we're ready to go and clean this up. Let's go put this home. Oops. 
and I knocked my camera just a little bit, but that's okay. It kind of broke off over into um, the other the other hole right now. Um, I could try and ream on this, but I'm actually just going to use my Dremel and clean that up. I knocked out a good 75% of the material. All right, so there's that. <laughs> kind of fun. Kind of fun, right? I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying the stream. And now, all we got to do is ream this thing out. So let's go back, camera A. Let me give you guys a little bit of a different angle because you're probably getting bored. This is like crazy beans. There's a lot going on here tonight. I'm not going to make a habit of doing this. But hey, that's actually not a bad angle for you guys. That's awesome. All right, do I have power? Yeah, I do. Give this thing the works. And then I ha I, I'm wearing my glasses, but I should have been wearing my safety glasses this whole time. Um, but again, the wonders of editing, it's not a big deal because I can just say that I have been. All right, grab your Dremel. I've got kind of a carving bit on this, if you can see that. It's kind of uh, you know round. It's really made for slotting things. That's what we can use to go and clean this thing out. Now, when you're using these rotary tools, make sure you grab your safety glasses. Bam. So, just like that. So, I, I guess I could put them on, but whatever. Um, so, <laughs> and then we can go get a little bit tighter shot on what we're doing here. And we can go ahead and do this. I think this is where, oh wait, I gotta do my, I, I gotta do it the right way because I always do. All right. All right, templates in place. And I think this template is really gonna help make this easy. Um, let's get to work. Let's, let's start pulling this apart. And using that template, we're gonna be able to get this really, really, I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. We can get this really, really accurate. That's actually working really, really, really well. So like here would be a perfect spot for me to use um, um, uh, time-lapse mode. So now I'm just gonna switch over to time-lapse mode. Reverse my camera and go ahead and turn that on. And I always like time lapse mode because I can actually just take my freaking time. You know, I, I'm not killing myself filming all the time. This template is actually working out really, 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 really well. Sorry about that. I, my camera is totally in the way there. Um, but this is working really, really well. Um, I don't want to screw up my time lapse, though. So I'm just going to go like this. Keep this in there. See if that works here. I gotta see. This is the tricky part. It's always camera positioning. Let me move you guys over just a little bit and move this back in. A high quality tripod is gonna be so helpful to you. The other thing I would always run into as well is the the camera or the yeah the camera would always be right where my elbow wanted to wrench. Um, that was no Siri. I don't need you. Um, that was always a huge pain too. It's like. You're, you just got, you're shooting. You always seem to be shooting, but you need to shoot where you need to be wrenching. And uh, it's always very annoying. So, okay, my timeline's, uh, time lapse is still going. So let's just keep cleaning this up.
Gonna have to flip my piece just a little bit. Try and keep you guys in chat there. Thanks for hanging out on the stream. This is like really, this is like really fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun. And yeah, I just got to clean up this side of it. Yeah, I am actually going to put these. I, I, I don't know why I hesitate to put my, my safety glasses on. Oh, that's a jumpy bugger. I think I want to go just a little bit bigger. Actually coming out really good. Let me give you a closer look here. Uh, white's kind of tough, but zoom. See, look at that. The template is working just as I had hoped. <laughs> it's wonderful. I love that. That works really well. Roger, they use that technique to cut holes in things called chain drilling, where the holes run into one another. That actually, that term makes a ton of sense. So, oh, oh yeah, I got to turn off my time lapse because that, that's enough. I don't need to shoot the whole darn thing. I just need a little bit. And yeah, I feel pretty good. I'm going to clean up this corner a little bit. what it looks like underneath. I have no idea. So like a good transition shot now would be to just move the camera, go back to video. And now I've already completed all the work. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start a shot and then like kind of pretend that I'm ending. <laughs> so I'm going to run. There you go, guys. Let's see how we did there. All right, take off my clamp, pull this off, and take off my grip, just like that. Let's take a look. Try not to wipe that with your bare finger because stuff's gonna be real sharp. But there you go. We have a perfectly templated cut in this. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that this is pretty sharp here, okay? Um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to kind of dull this edge just a little bit. So I'm going to take my Dremel just a little bit and just kind of knock off any kind of rough stuff. Because remember, we got wires coming through here, and uh, we, we don't want those, 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 uh, those wires to, over time or vibration, to cut and start shorting out and start wrecking things. But uh, that's kind of how I'm going about it, guys. Um, what do you think? I think it works great. Um, again, just an old set of bars if you have it handy. I mean, I mean, you could do it with anything. I, I like having a metal template uh, just because I don't know it's sturdy. It's not you, you're not going to cut it. I thought about making something out of like a wooden dowel or something like that, but I think I would have just ended up destroying that. So um, it's actually worked really, really well. Let's clean this up a little bit, just like that. And I know I'm sacrificing some of your shots uh, tonight uh, to do the video, um, but don't worry. I'm almost done with this video um, and uh, we'll be good to go. So, all right, so now I'm just gonna swing this around and I'll show you, give you guys a little insight kind of too on like how, how I edit it and, and how all that works too. So let's see, da, 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 da. okay, where am I at? Uh, okay. Oh, I need to adjust I'm a little bit low. All right. 
All right, just carefully and lightly. I'm actually gonna decrease the speed on my Dremel just a little bit. I'm gonna go inside here real light and gentle and knock out any rough spot on this edge. Another thing I wanna do is I wanna angle in just a little bit as well to knock off that inside edge that may have some, some burrs on it. You need a really soft touch when you're doing this. This is what I'm, what I'm learning here. It works great with just a soft touch. And then again, make sure you're getting underneath, underneath this edge to make sure you're getting all the sharp stuff off. So you can flip this piece around and do the other side. So there you go. So now, again, again, go back to time-lapse mode and we can continue kind of working through this process. Time-lapse mode, down, bam. Now that's running and now everything's good. Now I can go in here, make sure I'm on camera. Again, draw it and try to get inside. Soft touches. I think that's honestly pretty damn good. And I can kill my time lapse. And uh, that's honestly like where I could wrap this video. Um, this is pretty much done. So I need one closing shot and that's pretty much it. So um, I can just go right back to video. And I can go handheld on this one. So I can just go in just like this. Hey, Tula, how are you, man? Good to see you. Thanks for joining the stream, man. This has been, a, been kind of a fun one. Um, I'm kind of doing a video tutorial and drilling holes in some handlebars. So <laughs> we're having fun. All right, so next little item, I will say, um, yeah, I think this looks freaking great. And there you go. That's how you do it, man. I mean, these templates are a lifesaver. Um, I, I will highly suggest it, man. Somebody should manufacture something like that. Maybe they already do and I've just missed it. But we've got ourselves our holes so that we can run the wires properly through these handlebars and not do a cheesy off the, off the handlebars thing, you know, and, and using those zip ties. So, you know, get yourself some molds. I'll also have to go back and make a mold to drill the, uh, the, the main bottom shaft as well. So I need to go and do that. But, uh, you know, overall, just kind of a rinse and repeat process to get that stuff to happen. And, you know, these bars are just going to look <laughs> amazing on the Apocalypse bike. Guys, thanks so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please thumbs up. Also, subscribe if you haven't done that already. Um, and also, if you want to support the channel, be sure to share the videos. If you'd like to sign up for my monthly newsletter, check out keeponwrenching.com. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream. So that's it. You guys have heard that stuff a, a bajillion times. And uh, now it's uh, really quite simple to edit. You guys will be, uh, you know, I just use uh, iMovie on my phone to, to literally edit this stuff together. So um, let me just uh, get some files together, make sure everything's looking good. And I can give you a kind of a quick tutorial of what that stuff is going to look like. And do, 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 do. let me go, how can I do that with this camera? Because that should technically be a pretty good how-to video 
um, on how I kind of achieved that. So let's go and open iMovie. See if you guys can, like, for, for those of you who care, this, this actually doesn't take very long at all. Um, are we in focus? Anyway, iMovie, make a new project, make a new movie, okay? Now I can go back, I can see all of my different clips, and here, it's the only thing I've shot today, so it's all right here. And I can go just one in order that I shot it. I go, I select all of this. This includes all the time lapses, everything, and I'm just selecting all the videos just like that. Right now it's saying it's a 17 minute video and just click create movie. Now this is where it brings you into an editor where things um, you know, can get a little bit time consuming, but again, like I talked about earlier, if you shoot really smart um, to begin with, um, your editing is really, really, really minimal. So one of the things I do on my video is I always do a fade in, fade out. That's just in your little gear icon at the bottom left. And then let me make sure I got volume up and we can go like this. Hey guys. So there it is. There's my edit. I touch it. I split it. I delete it. Hey guys, at BB Manson here. How about those black bars? I am absolutely in love with these black handlebars for the CL350. And uh, we got a problem because if you remember, we already put the switches and ran the wires. All of this is there. So all I really have to do, so here's all my takes. I know I didn't have any bad takes in this one, like where I messed something up. So like here, I can just go to the end of this. And let's take a look at those right now. So the all you have to do then is trim off that first one or two seconds. Right so the challenge is That's it. And you just do that throughout the whole video and, uh, you know, and just string it all together. And then by the end of it, you're done. That's really all there is to it, and there's the entire video. Um, what takes a ton of time, though, um, is the rendering and the upload. That can take a lot of time sometimes, but, you know, there's what we just did right there. Filmed it. Man, we live-streamed it and recorded it at the same time. That's, I don't know, that's pretty cool. I'm feeling pretty uh, accomplished right now, um, but hopefully you guys uh, in enjoyed the little tutorial as well. But yeah, I'll have to just go back through here, trim up some of these clips. You can see, you know, you'll see this on the YouTube channel probably, you know, tonight or tomorrow morning. I'll get this up. And there it is. And there you go. Oh, one other thing. So on time lapses, um, for those of you who are doing this stuff. Okay, so here's like a time lapse section. So some of the time lapses, oops, some of the time lapses can get a little bit long. Um, there's a little setting down here, a timer. You can actually just move this slider here to, to speed those up, and that'll shorten that up dramatically. So there's like zzz, 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 there's all this stuff, ba 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 ba. That time lapse is going to be over in about four seconds. Um, the other thing I might do here as an example here is like on a time lapse. Uh, time lapse is always a good opportunity to do a quick little voiceover, and you can do this on iMovie on your phone as well. Just hit the plus sign, and then go. There's a voiceover option right here, and it'll set it up to say, "Okay, ready to record." And then I'll just do like a simple one here. Take your time and be thorough. You don't want any sharp edges messing with your wiring later on. Bam. Now there it is, I can accept it. And now, I don't know if you guys can hear this so good on my mic, but. Uh, time lapse mode. Take your time and be thorough. You don't want any sharp edges messing with your wiring later on. <laughs> so I'm gonna run. There you go. So it's really, you know, it's, it's that simple, guys. Um, <laughs> I thought that was kind of fun. I hope you maybe learned something, maybe get inspired to start making some videos because we do need content out there, and each one of, everybody in the group is at a different level of experience and things. What I found with uh, some of the videos that I watched while I was trying to learn how to work on these bikes was that uh, they were like, I don't know how really to describe it. They're, they're like almost like master mechanic people who didn't like explain the dumb stuff. Like the stuff that, that or maybe there were things in there that, that they assumed I should already know, but I didn't know. 
Um, so that, that's why I kind of put my series together, um, kind of honestly, because I figured we were all learning this stuff together. So that was pretty cool. That was a lot of fun. So yeah, that might be kind of fun to edit up all into itself and, and, and make a video of it. Always content ideas. I'm gonna save these. I'm gonna hold on to these um, forever. These, these templates are great because these, these bars, you know, they're not expensive. Um, and now that I know that I can go ahead and drill these holes and make that stuff happen. I feel good about it. I don't want to go on the stream tonight and you know get these all wired up. I'd like to uh, do something a little bit different. So Tula, how are you, man? It's good to see you. Um, Michigan's back on lockdown central for sure. The vid is is making a making a comeback. Tula's a fellow Michigander, um, hanging out with me here. So that's awesome. Uh, Roger can't go wrong with black, silver, and chrome, right? It's gonna work. It's gonna work. And then just remember, I'm gonna black wrap that 68 CL exhaust. So it's gonna be black wrapped, and then that black cover on that exhaust. It's gonna be kind of a blacked out bike. Um, and then the other thing I was thinking about, um, I, I I have a bunch of of, uh, of soda like for soda blasting. So I was thinking I might try. I have a couple extra wheels that I'm not using right now. So I was thinking, uh, I wonder what it would look like to like soda blast uh, the wheels and the hubs and the spokes. I don't know, like keep the chrome, keep the chrome ring. Um, but because the spokes are so, they're kind of corroded and dull, I don't think I'd ever get those polished up. What if I just, uh, you know, soda blasted them, see, see how that would come out? Um, that, that's, that's something I'm, I'm strongly considering. So if any of you have ever tried that or have a picture, um, I would be fascinated to see that. It's time to go to Christmas. Let's go hop over to Christmas, guys. We got parts. We got a lot of parts. Tula, you finished up your second carb. Oh, that, the emulsifier tube. Worked on the front fork seals last weekend. You're making progress, man. You're moving right through it. Uh, Tula, next summer, dude, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's rally up with one of these bikes. We're, we live too close to not, not cross paths again. So we got a lot of parts <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the mail, and I got one more box coming, which is going to be great. So I actually ordered a number of parts from four into one this time around. Um, one, because uh, CMC didn't have a lot of things in stock when I was kind of ordering things. things. Things were out of stock. And also some of these prices were considerably cheaper. Now, does that mean that it's a cheaper product? I don't know that yet because I haven't looked at any of the things, but I figured, you know what, if I can save just a little bit of money, um, let's try it. They have a whole, you know, a kit um, with all the control cables. Uh, they had the clutch cable, throttle cable. Um, they have a lot of reproduction products, which I tried to steer away from. Um, but in some cases, I just really didn't have, you know, a choice in doing that. But then an official Honda one, whatever. So there's going to be a couple replica cables, um, all good. But they did have the air filters, which I was really, really excited about. And then in the other one, this is where this bike is really going to start kind of taking off, okay? Um, I got a set of mirrors. I think I showed it on Instagram once already, but check these out. Kind of a matte or satin black. <laughs> it's gonna look freaking cool. So basically the switches, the bars, the mirrors, everything is gonna be blacked out on this bike. So I got a set of these uh, black ones from four into one. They appear to be pretty, pretty solid too. Uh, they, they, they don't feel really chintzy, chintzy cheap, um, which is good because I'm, I'm never quite, really quite sure. I've been, you know, such a, a, a CMC guy, um, always ordering those parts, but I had to kind of branch out. And there's another one. I'd be curious, have you guys ever ordered parts from Old Bike Barn? Um, I recently have been getting a ton of Facebook ads from them. And, uh, and uh, I checked out their website and they actually have quite a bit of good stuff there. Oh, the other thing, uh, it's in the box. I'll, I'll show you here in a second. But we got black levers. I got black levers in the box. Uh, I got a black um, top nut for, for, the, for the forks or the, the, uh, the triple tree. 
And I picked up, of course, some of the crush rings or the, the crush rings for the exhaust because I'm going to need those. I actually did have, find the uh, rear brake shoes here as well. CMC was out of those. Uh, I got a bunch of grommets for the side covers because I'm always wrecking those. So I just grabbed a bunch of those and I got a gas cap seal for the bike as well. So let's take a look at some of the stuff. And I am also uh, keeping track of, of how much I'm spending. Um, so also on the keeponwrenching.com site, uh, I want to have kind of budget items as well, or like to-do lists or buy lists with links to products and things like that as well. So I want to make that site as, as useful as, as possible. So again, guys, if you haven't already, um, you know, one, join the Facebook group, okay? Because I think that would be really, really awesome for you to be a part of the community long term. But then also, if you have not already, go to keeponwrenching.com, all right? And go sign up for the e-newsletter. Okay, pretty simple. Let me see if I can go, can I navigate right back? Yeah. So just go down to the bottom here. There's a little thing here. Don't miss out on what's happening in the shop, live streams in the studio or on the road. Subscribe to the email list. I'm gonna do that monthly newsletter. Um, so um, I'll share tips, tricks, new videos, uh, maybe some exclusive content, I, I don't know. Uh, but also just, I'm just gonna try to be as useful as humanly possible. That's the goal, okay? Um, so please sign up, keeponwrenching.com. All right, so I got four of these grommets because I've got another. I've got that 68 CB outside. That's going to need probably grommets too. Um, and plus, these are just things that you need to have. Now, these up here, I don't think that these are genuine Honda parts. It would be in a red bag if it was. Um, so we got those. I just ordered a ton of all of these. Uh, because I'm just going to need them. These are those crush gaskets, especially on a CL. Um, sometimes you got to take that darn thing off or take your exhaust off over and over and over again. At least that's what I've learned. Um, and plus, I've got a buddy that's working on one. Uh, he's going to need them. So went ahead and bought these. Now, on four into one, I noticed that a lot of the things that they do, um, there, there were a, like reproduction, then there was official Honda, and then there was kind of a middle of the ground brand. Um, these were kind of the middle of the ground, ground, middle of the ground brand. Say that ten times fast. Um, but figure, hey, we got them. We got those in house. Now for that tank on the Apocalypse bike, it needed a gas cap seal. Uh, Tula, you'd you'd remember this. Um, you know, we got a video <laughs> on how to install these in the playlist. So that needs to go in on that, and then that tank is going to be done. Uh, these are all we already had these, but we've got the black grips. So we've got the black grips, the black mirrors, black switches, black bars. It's gonna look, I don't know, I think it's gonna look classy. It's gonna look classy. And then here we have the black handles, control arms. I love this. Isn't that great? I'm just loving this. I still think like if you're if you're starting kind of from ground zero and you're and you're trying to rebuild your bike and you and you have to buy a certain amount of parts. I, I'm I'm working on some of the Excel sheets now, um, but it looks like you know you could do it and make sure everything that needs to be super safe safe. I, I think you need about eight hundred to a thousand dollars is kind of what I'm thinking. So this one, oh, I thought this came with a black washer. Gosh darn it, I swear the picture said it was, oh, it's got kind of a rounded ring on it. This actually feels a little cheap to me, a little chintzy. Not quite what I had envisioned, but to keep the all black look, I might end up using that. I might be all good. Here's that other handle. We've got the other handle sitting here. What's this? Oh, I got another, I got another. I just stocked up on parts because I know I'm going to be um, working on these bikes. I'm going to have other tanks. I've got, what, one, two, three, and then another one out in the garage. I have four motorcycle tanks right now as it is. So I got a couple of the gas cap seals, and then we've got our rear brake shoes. So I get Bike Master. Again, this was kind of the middle of the road brand because, again, I'm, I, I initially wanted the Apocalypse bike to be a, kind of an economy build um, to kind of use what I have and all that. But when it comes to like controls, cables, brakes, things like that, I, I, I do want to install new parts on them because I, I do want some reliability. 
they did have some that were kind of, I want to say they were like 17 or $18. Um, I, I, I don't know. I just, I, I never buy cheap. I always think it's like when you're buying tools, right? Like don't buy cheap tools because you're going to end up buying those tools three, four times. Uh, instead, just spend the money up front, get good tools. So I, I went middle of, the, middle of the ground here. I don't know if you guys have ever used this brand or not, but I'm going to compare these, you know, to an original set. Um, it, I mean, it, I take their word for it that that's what it's supposed to be. And then uh, inside the box, this is that other mirror. I should check to make sure it's a black one. And it is. It's a nice black mirror, man. I can't, I really am looking forward to getting the bars put together. I think I'll, I'll probably get to that this weekend to actually finish that, that whole job. So that's all this stuff. So I can go ahead and put all this stuff back in there. Now we can dive into box number two. And then the third and final box of all the parts that I should need to get this bike done will be arriving on Saturday, according to Mr. Post Office Man. So that'll be great. So let's get this box out of the way. Let's dive into this box. Now here's where these cables are coming from. And this is where you get into that re reproduction stuff uh, versus not reproduction stuff. So here are two reproduction ones. The big difference, these three, or these should have them. Ah, so these are supposed to be, I thought they were supposed to be real Honda ones. Oh well, whatever. So let's take one of these out. So this is our front brake cable. Oh God, I hate to take it out of here because now I'm gonna have to like deal with it. Dog leg levers, is that what those are called, Roger? They provide more travel at the brakes at the end for less movement, your end. Okay, I just like the look. Um, I actually have those on my 70 CB. I mean, this, honestly, this feels almost identical to the cables that I've bought before. I wonder if they're, if they, if they're sourced from the same place or not. Because, like, just from feel and texture and, like, look at the, the quality, the gauge of the wire, all of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, Roger, that's a great point. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm lucky if I put a thousand miles on these bikes a year. You know, I, I, I'm lucky if I get to do that much. So yeah, good point. And you don't need the super high quality stuff unless you're really tearing it up. Um, I think that this is great. Now we'll have to go, I got another video I can make because I do have this tool that I picked up. Let's see if I can find it quickly. Yeah. This is from somebody uh, in comments, I think, on a video. But they uh, were like, hey, dude, why are you just dribbling oil down in your cables? You're an idiot. You don't know anything. You're the worst person in the world. Um, get this tool. <laughs> and uh, basically, I guess it's, an, it's a lube. It's a cable lube tool. Uh, I haven't figured out how to use it yet. I haven't even really tried. But we got one, and that will be in a future video. Isn't that exciting? Um, I like the feel and the quality of these cables so far. It was a little bit of a, I don't know, kind of a stab in the dark, if you will. I was like, you know what, let's just try it. Let's try something different this time. And uh, yeah, I like it. So here we've got, so this was the front brake cable. We've got our clutch cable. This looks like a taco cable, I would bet. Yeah, our tack cable right there. Everything's looking exactly the way it should. Tula, I made the mistake of buying the wrong front brake cable standard from CMC. I need the longer one. Why do you need the longer one? I just out of curiosity, what, what made that different? Do you have like higher bars? Do you, or what's going on there, Tula? Why'd you have to do that? Roger bought a cable oiler the other day. Brilliant tools. Maybe you can show me how to use it, Roger. Maybe somebody made a video about it. Roger, make me a video real quick about how to use the damn thing. And then throttle cable. So that's right here. Hopefully these are all going to be the same length. Now what I am going to do is, you know, I'm going to compare the lengths to your old cables. Whenever you take your cables off your bike, do not throw them away. 
um, you know, you take them. Because remember on the 72 build, um, I had to go back and I was having all kinds of problems and it ended up being one cable was too short um, when you compare it to the original. So don't throw away your original parts. You might need them for a little bit of reference. And then we got our Speedo cable. So we got a full set of cables ready to go on this beautiful, <laughs> on this beautiful apocalypse bike. Guys, I'm getting just so excited uh, because the parts are in house and now we're, we are full on assembly mode. Full on assembly mode, all right? Boom. Tula, the original is about three inches longer, I believe 51 inches and the CMC one is 48, something like that. Interesting. Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye out on that when I order cables again. Uh, it's just, it's tough. It, it's, I, I know I've gotten a couple of one that were off for sure over the years. Um, well, years, I mean, it's been only a couple years that I've been doing this. And then kind of like this, I, I always consider this, this last item in the box to be kind of the kick in the balls. This is the, just the thing that you, you kind of got to do because chances are your, your air filters probably look something like this. You know, when, when we're restoring these old bikes, like that's your air filter, that's what it looks like and they're freaking nasty. Uh, Kevy Kev, the thing about aftermarket front brake cables for the 70, they don't have the brake light actuator. That is key. I had to go through that same problem. Kevy Kev, I 100% hear what you're talking about. Um, yeah, I had to put a, a separate grip on there. That would be something worth discussing as well. Um, that, that, was a, that was actually a big hurdle for my first bike, trying to figure out what was going on there. Um, yeah, and they do not make the cable with the integrated brake light switch in there anymore. Like, you cannot buy it, so you have to kind of do a mod. But yeah, so back to the air filter thing. Like, they're all nasty, right? This probably shouldn't even be in my house. It's probably um, freaking deadly, for, for all I know. Um, but... The thing is, is that these, these, these bad boys are not cheap. These are not cheap, but I did find, and they're Honda. These are official Honda parts, which is, which is huge. I agree, Kevy. I agree. It's a bummer that nobody makes those. I puzzled over that for a long time, and, and I had zero experience when I was working on my first bike, and I, I kind of thought I was dead in the water, and I bought a lemon, and I was never going to you know, be successful, but found a way. Whew, ain't that pretty. You'll never see it, but it's brand new, it's beautiful, and it's official Honda part. Um, I did find a little bit better price on these. I think the, the price was better, not by much. I wanna say less than $10 on four into one. Um, but CMC didn't have these in stock, or they, I think they only had the right one, something like that. And I was like, what the hell? I couldn't buy the set, so I was able to get the left and right set of these. Oh my God, take a look at that. Let's do a side by side, let me go grab this. You do not want to be putting this back in your bike. You know, air is really, really key, so. I mean, you got to splurge. I mean, it's like, it's, I think it was like 120 bucks for that set of air filters. But they're important, guys. And, you know, that's, I just always hate ordering these. It's, you know, because like an air filter for a car or something is like, you know, 15 bucks or 12 bucks or something. And like, these are just like ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm actually shocked that we're actually able to still buy them at all. So that was kind of my Christmas. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show you, oh, I didn't mock that up. I might, uh, give me a second over here. Let me, let me go back to the desk because I really do want to show you this. I made a very big decision as far as how the bike is, is going to work or, or how it's going to look aesthetically. And I want to find this. Just let me bear with me here on the internet here for a little bit. Um, da, 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 what would be the easiest? Let's go over here. 
Have you guys ever heard of Texavina? Oh, I just spilled my beer on myself. Oh no, and now I got beer going all over. Ah, what a pain in the butt. Okay, um, Texavina makes really awesome freaking motorcycle seats. Um, and I found one that I absolutely love for the Apocalypse bike. So how do I get back over there? Texavina, T-E-X-A-V-I-N-A. -A -A. Honda motorcycle seats. I'll, I'll bring up the screen share here in just a second. 68 to 73. The other thing is, I'm, this is another video that I'm gonna make as well, is, uh, the, the differences in seats because I almost bought the wrong seat. Now on the VIN tag on the Apocalypse bike, it says 71, okay? It's like it was manufactured in whatever, 71. But if you look at the numbers on the VIN, it actually is a 72. And a K3 seat, which would be a 71, a, a 350 K3 and a 71, apparently from what I read, the seats are different. So a K3 is kind of a bastard child a little bit um, in, in the sense that it, it's, it, it, if I would have got the K3 seat, it probably wouldn't have worked. So I ended up going and getting a, a 72 K4 seat. And I think that's gonna be the right one. So let me see, uh, 72, let me see if I can find it real quick. 72. 71, 72, I believe this is the one. Is it 189? Oh yeah, they did a price drop. Man, they did a drive price drop. Glad I got it. Uh, but anyway, how can I make this bigger so you can see that? Can you see that okay? This is what I got. Black, low profile, kind of a cafe seat. So it's got the uh, side hinge. There, that side profile. That's a, that's a, that's a good way to look at this. Um, can I? Just click on it. Well, that's the, that, it's smaller than the other preview. It drives me crazy. But look, these are really nice seats, guys. Um, they take a long time to get to you, okay? Like they can take like a month to get over to you. Yes, Tula, a big difference. I'm gonna do a whole video on this. Uh, on, on the differences in these seats. So there's side hinge and there's rear hinge. Um, seven, up to 70, there are rear hinge and 70, 71 forward, I think they went to side hinge. But look at that, look at how beautiful this is. Um, that's what I got, that's what's going on this apocalypse bike. What do you guys think? I think it's gonna look freaking bad ass. Now, um, I have a Texavina seat here now uh, that I'm not using. So let me show you uh, one of their seats. Let me show you one. Let's see, where would be the best place to do this? Let's go over to camera two. Let's go back over here. I'm excited. I splurged. That was like my, my Christmas present to myself this year, I think, was buying that seat. And it's on the way. It come, they're actually manufactured in Vietnam shipped to order <laughs> so it's got to come a long ways it comes through dallas all of this um one kind of heads up it is it kind of feels a little shady when you're ordering them but here's what you get so this is a, this is a cb350 rear hinge okay the rear hinge has the two two spots for the rear hinge on this seat um and uh yeah that's there's no lock mechanism or anything it's an early seat the seat pan, everything, it comes with the rubber boots. I took these off because I used these on another seat that I'd been working on. But I really want you to see, this is a very quality seat. It, it, these are beautiful seats. I had this one on my gold CB uh, for a while. Um, and uh, I actually just went back to the original after a while because I don't know, I just wanted to go back to kind of stock with that. And that seat was in great shape. And then I was going to, you know, whatever. I'm thinking about building stuff all the time. I was like, oh, I can take that brown seat, put it over there. And then I realized, I was like, oh, wait, 
I can't use that brown seat on that bike because that's a side hinge bike and you really got to pay attention to that stuff. So this seat, it's essentially very similar. I, I mean, it's very similar except mine's got kind of a, a tag or a, the, the hold on strap and stuff. It's going to look great, but a very similar seat is going to be going on on this bike. So. Yeah, Kevy Kev, those filters, they, they will last the, the life of the bike for sure. I'll never have to buy them again. Bike parts are a bit of a ripoff price-wise, for sure. <laughs> it seems a little excessive sometimes. Uh, less than a thousand miles a year. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you're, you're right. I need to keep that in mind. Um, they open differently. Yeah, okay, we did that. Did they do that for the lock or do the early ones have seat locks too? The early ones don't have seat locks, Tula. Um, they, they do not. Only those uh, side hinge bikes, like the Apocalypse bike, is going to have that that uh, have that seat lock. That seat lock is going to be right here. That does not exist. I, I wish I had the '68 frame down here because I could show you guys that. But I am. It's the, literally probably going to be the next video um, that I make. Look at how beautiful this is. This is going to be such a cool bike. Uh, the one detail I'm thinking about adding to it is just one black pinstripe on the headlight. So we get the chrome and then just the black. I don't know. thought it'd be kind of, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's, it's unnecessary, but I don't know. But man, this thing came out so good. I'm so happy. <laughs> getting excited about this thing, man. It's, it's getting really, really close. Um, Tula, Tula, your, your donation, your donation to the cause. That is undercoated and ready to go. I need to start cleaning this thing up once and for all, and then we can get this bad boy on the bike. But it is undercoated. And let me see. I did hit this thing with the buffer. You did a fantastic job of getting this thing started for me. This thing was really, really clean. Um, but I'm telling you, a little bit of time on the buffer and this thing is mirror-like, and this is gonna be beautiful. And the thing that blows me away about this fender, this rear fender, um, oop, is that that sticker is still 100% intact and in mint, absolute mint condition. It is uh, amazing to see that there. So um, that's, on, that's on the progress, and I'm super excited to finish the rear fender on my brand new six inch Craftsman buffer. <laughs> I got a proper one. It's used, I got it off Marketplace. Heck of a deal, it's amazing. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't even mucked with it yet. I just got it in the house uh, this evening. So I'm excited about it. I think it's gonna be a huge upgrade. And again, the big advantage, um, the big advantage of um, having an actual buffing wheel versus a grinding wheel is this distance that you're getting away uh, from the motor. You, you get a lot more room to work parts um, with this kind of a setup. I really was running into a jam, especially while I was trying to do the, uh, that rear fender, uh, which is pretty much why I stopped, is because I, I really couldn't get in there uh, at the angles I needed to do uh, to get that all properly kind of working. So this is another awesome little upgrade and addition to the home shop. Okay, let's see. This is what I'm looking at. I'm looking up. Let's see. Let's read some chats. Tula, I didn't spend that much time on it. None on the underside. Yeah, I know because I had to sandblast that out. <laughs> yeah, I did. And, and there's a video up. I did a whole video of, um, of how to treat that and, and what we did. I think, oh, that wasn't your fender though. That was the front fender. Yeah. Oh my God. Take a look at this nightmare. Um, this is gonna be the challenge of challenge, guys. The front fender is undercoated. Perfect, looks great. Very happy with that. But shield your eyes. Ah! Look at, you guys, oh yeah, even on camera, you guys can see the swirls and the scratches in this. I am, I'm, I'm not sure what to do here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what to do here if this is going to come out. Now, right here, you can see I, I tried to kind of start just a little. I just wanted to see if I could knock it out. And sure enough, down right in the middle, 
I did actually get the shine to start coming through, but it took a lot of effort and it took a ton of compound. It took a lot of compound to do that. So I've, I'm, I'm gonna remain hopeful, but let me, let me run something by you guys. This is what I was thinking. So what I was thinking was, is if, if I can't get that front fender um, polished out, okay, because it's so scratched up and it looks, looks so shitty. Kevy Kev, thank you so much for the $5, dude. That is amazing. You got the Jack Bauer <laughs> emote, and uh, that is there, man. You are the first, the first ever donation I've ever gotten on the live stream. I don't even talk about it. You used the, uh, the super chat? Is that what you used to be able to do that? Yeah, that's awesome, Kevy Kev. Thank you so much. That is rad. Yeah, so there's super chat there, guys. Um, if you want to support the stream, you can absolutely do that. I'm extremely thankful, and every dollar you know that 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 I get on this goes back into projects and back into creating more content, getting more parts, and 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 keeping these things going. So, yeah, Kevy Kev, thank you so freaking much. That is rad. That got me so excited. <laughs> I'm glad that Sounder played for uh, for the Jack Bauer uh, Sounder man. I, I set that up a, a long time ago. And uh, yeah, it like popped up on my screen and I was like, damn, that's awesome. Oh man, I'm smiling, that feels great. Um, so what the hell was I talking about? Um, what the heck was I talking about? Oh my God. <laughs> I was talking about, has this ever happened to you guys either? Um, I don't know. Roger, you have one of those Honda racks? Oh, dude, <laughs> I will pay shipping. I will, I will, I will outright buy that. Please uh, send me an email. Um, let, Roger, I, I would love, love that. Um, and, and you could sign like the underside of one of the bars or something and, and, uh, and, and I'll clear coat it and it'll be there for prosperity. Dude, send, um, keep on wrenching, uh, keep on wrenching at gmail.com. You can just send that, send, send me a message over there. That, that would be amazing. But what the hell was I, what, what, what was I talking about? A rear rack on this bike would look cool. I remember, I remember, I remember what it was. So, and Kevy Kev, thank you again so much. That is so awesome. If I cannot polish this, which I'm not sure if I can. I mean, it is, I, I, w I wish you could see what I see. It's bad. Um, I was thinking I could paint it, but paint it the same color as the, um, the, the tank. Do it in that aluminum silver paint. So the fender would actually be kind of, it would match the tank. Would that be like too much? Would that be like too much? Adam, you forget what you're talking about all the time. <laughs> I, I do all the time. Um, but what do you think that would look tacky? Like it kind of makes me think of like maybe the old Honda Dreams, like how like everything was painted on those. Um, give me your honest opinion about what you think about that because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to polish this thing out. Um, Kevy Kev, if you can't get the fender polished out, yeah, right, thank you. Okay, cool. All right, back on track. But yeah, I was thinking it wouldn't be that hard um, to prep that surface and just paint it with the same paint and the same process that I did on the tank. I don't know, would that look stupid? I mean, it's not like I'm going like purple or blue or red or something. I'm going with like a, like a silver, you know? So let me just tilt this over. You know, it's like the silver and just do the same color here. No, just match, just match it all. Oh, Cause I could make this look like glass. You know, there's a couple little, there's, there's not even, there's really not any dents in it. It's, it's really a clean, clean looking fender, but I'm just, I, it's through the chrome. Somebody brushed the chrome literally off of it. So I would be polishing, I think the nickel, if anything, I, I'm kind of thinking that would look 
pretty rad to be able to do that. Come on. Oh, come on. Let's get this on here. How the hell did that go? I gotta kinda like dance these things around. How the hell was that? Oh, that was the other thing too though that I wanted to show you guys. Ooh. CB fender, or CB fender right here, flat, okay? CL fender, got little divots in it. Yeah, that's an option too, Kevy Kev. I didn't even really think of that, of, of bringing it places. Um, yeah, I'm just really not going places right now. <laughs> um, sadly, I'm just not going places. But th there was a question that came in on the Keep On Wrenching group too about are the forks uh, a different width? And uh, ooh, where's my camera? Oh, I, my camera moved because I moved my camera because I wanted to see that beautiful bike. Um, but it's actually just the fork boot. The, the fork boots are a little bit wider on the ridges and the boots go through here. So you need, if you're converting, because again, I'm converting a CB to a CL is basically what's happening here. And uh, you got to change that front fender. Okay, it's got to have these, these little uh, kind of divots in it. So it actually goes in there. But uh, yeah, replating wouldn't be bad. I don't know how much that costs. I don't know how much it costs to actually do that. I had this damn thing on there. Whatever. I had it on there. It fits. I know it's, I know it's all good. So replating. I should call around now and see. <sighs> yeah. And plus it's like the apocalypse bike, right? It's like I kind of want to limit as much chrome as I possibly can. And I also don't want to paint Tula Tom's fender, you know? I don't want to paint it because I think I can buff that one out looking great. So, Kevy Kev, that's actually a really good suggestion to just see if I could get it replated. I'll put that on the to-do list. I should put that on the to-do list for sure. Yeah, Roger, kind of with it. Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking, right? If there, I could get any perfection, imperfections out of it and uh, do a hell of a nice paint job on that. I know I could do that, but then it might look a little weird with the, with the chrome rear fender. And I really don't want to paint that. I'd rather find another junky one like that um, and, and paint that, but God, replating, I didn't even think of that, man. Um, yeah, I just was like, God, what could I do myself here and, and, and just do that? Love it, cool. Let's see, what else do we got going on? There is just, there is no shortage of, uh, of things to be thinking about and doing right now. Um, it's gonna be a lot of little small projects. I'm not gonna probably build the whole bike on the live stream. Um, I'll try and keep you guys up to date with what's going on as it's going, and then just do kind of these little special projects, um, you know? Tula, it's yours now. Do what you want with it. I know, but I have to make up my mind. And, uh, you know, one thing I don't like doing, I don't mind painting a part that is garbage, right? And that fender is garbage. So it doesn't, that doesn't hurt me um, emotionally in any way to paint that part. Um, but painting that one, painting yours, I, do, I would feel bad about that. Just as a part that's in really good condition as it is. I feel like that would be a little bit wasteful. So I, I don't know if I could pull the trigger on doing that. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so what, I don't know, what should we do? We got a little bit more time left here tonight to kind of muck through some things. You know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want to pull one of the, that right hand switch out and see if we can feed those wires through. And then what we could do is we could put our, uh, we could put the, uh, the new handle on, we could put the grip on, we could do a lot of things with that. I think we should do that. So, these bars are gone. But we need these brand new, nice little refurbished uh, switches. So I gotta get this off of here. 
It's like the squeakiest damn bench. Why is it so squeaky? One of the best things I bought recently was this Allen wrench thing that keeps everything all straight. Yeah, Kevy Kev, I, I would have a hard time um, painting that because it, it'll go on another build. Another build's not going to have a fender, you know. It's it's just inevitable in that way. So you guys were, or a lot of you were probably here when we put this one together. And this one has the wrong cowl on it. I must have just put the wrong one on there. But we can take this. Now I'm just wondering if we can get it back out. Without wrecking all the wiring. Awesome, Roger. Roger, Roger I will... Uh, I will check that and let's communicate because I, I do think like an apocalypse bike uh, absolutely needs a rear rack. You got to be able to carry your rations, you know, it just wouldn't be right. Otherwise, let's see, let's see if I can get this to start moving. Oh yeah, it's starting to move. Oh, it breaks my heart to have to do this because this is like so much work to get these things through, but it needs to be done. Because the black bars have won my, uh, have won my heart. Oh yeah, I don't have silicone, um, but I do have, I mean, when I put this in, I, I have Dawn all over my fingers already. So there's a lot of lube in there right now. I can already feel it on my fingers. Because we literally just put these, put these in, what, maybe, Maybe a month ago. There. Yeah, it's it's this is gonna come out pretty easy. I uh, yeah, there's dawn all over my fingers already. Famous last words. Tulatama placed a bungee cord down another twelve pack of two hearted. I like the way you're thinking, man. That's why you need a rear rack. Not that you should be drinking and riding. You should be you should be riding to a camping spot, all right, and then camping and drinking, and then waking up in the morning and then going to ride. <laughs> but if I just get this, it'll be good. Yeah, it's coming. Wish I yeah, baby oil would be another good option. Um, what I usually use, I could put a little bit more in there, but I can feel it already all over my hands. Is you know. Just some dishwashing liquid, some some basic stuff like that. But again, now my hands are getting all slippy slip. So I think I'm actually, oh my god, I spilt my beer again. I, I don't think I think I've had two drinks out of that beer and it's almost gone now because it's all on the floor. What a waste. I'm gonna put a pair of gloves on so I can actually grab something. My hands are all all slippery. Roger, you, you just made my, my freaking my day, dude. I'm excited about that. That's been the one thing I've been really wanting on this bike from the very beginning was, um, you know, it needs a cargo rack. So that's fantastic. fan freaking tastic Oh, I'm just bundled up down in here. I am going to add just a little bit on this back side of this dishwasher soap as I laid my arm right in the beer. That just spilt all over. Just dropping this down into here, into literally the end of the bar. And then we'll let this kind of tip up and kind of flow down just a little bit. Get a little bit of lube. Don't want to rip the wires out of the switch, you know. Yeah, they're hard to find, Kevy. They're like, they're really freaking hard to find, man. Um, I, and, I mean, you can find some like reproduction ones, but um, I have had a hell of a time finding those. Trying to work this out. There, there was my jam. Again, just uh, again, just like in that the the live stream where, where, and the video that we did this, 
one little piece at a time. Push down, pull it back out, push it down. There, I got that whole, the, the whole piece. Oops, let's change cameras, guys. Sorry about that. Like that. There we go. Come back over. Oh, I'm giving you like the most terrible freaking camera angles ever. There we go. Which one am I working here? I got that bundled down. That's in there. Shove these down. Yeah, me too, Kevy Kev. Um, the first two bikes that I did, I'm, um, this is my third. Um, they were back to original stock. This one um, just had some challenges, honestly, that kind of forced it into being a little bit of a custom bike or more custom bike than I had anticipated. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not a huge cafe guy. I mean, some of those bikes are beautiful, um, but they're just not necessarily my jam, if you will. Um, but maybe one day, just out of curiosity, um, yeah, I don't know. But I, I, I definitely like to keep the general idea going. There we go. Just got to work it around. There, we're making progress, guys. It's coming out of there. Richard's on. How you doing, Richard? Good to freaking see you. You're probably wondering, what the hell are you doing, Brian? You worked so hard to put that switch in, and now you're taking it out. Are you a madman? No, I'm not a madman. Just taking these things off. While I'm here, I might as well take this one off, too. Where's my JIS screwdriver? There it is. So I got a set of CL bars. I got an extra set of, and they're not bad. They're not perfect by any means. Look at how, look at how nice that, that JIS screwdriver just sits in that screw. Boom. I want to come out. I'm not a Phillips. I am JIS. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, uh, the economy build on the Apocalypse bike, um, I, I think it already kind of flew away on me, but it, it kind of flew away on me because of like safety and stuff too. I was really trying to think about, okay, well, it, you really should put, you know, these new things in and you like, by the, at the end of the day, I mean, you're really just buying safety is, is all you're, you're really doing. This one should come out relatively easily. This is the smaller bundle, so this one isn't nearly as, nearly as bad. I'm 100% with you, Kevy Kev, on cutting those frames. I, I, I weep a little bit inside every single time. I see like a video of somebody getting out the, the cutter and, and doing that. I'm with you, man. I, I, I don't think I could ever do that. But I mean, to each their own. Some of those damn bikes look really freaking cool. I mean, no doubt about it. But I, 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 mean, I mean, I was a history major in college. I, I do, <laughs> I just like the past and history and, and stuff like that, so. You know, all right, we got this one all stripped down again. Anybody need a nice straight set of uh, CL bars? Well, let me know. Don't think I'm gonna need them. So, there we go. We got our switches back out. No harm, no foul. Everything looks nice and tidy. Get that clamshell back together. And let's see, which one was which here? One was longer, one was not, uh, or no, no, they're the same. No, one's just a little bit longer. Looks to me like this one would be a little bit longer. Just don't want to lose my screws. I'm having so much fun tonight, guys. I hope you're enjoying the stream too, man. We've been hanging steady, 13 viewers, 10, 15 viewers, that's awesome. It's a fun stream. I was, I was a little kind of tired uh, this evening, and I was like, ah, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'll just post that I'll live stream tomorrow night. And the, I came down here, and this place was just a mess. 
Dude, it, it was a mess down here. And being disorganized is just a, a terrible feeling. I really, really, really dislike that feeling. And there goes my damn beer again. Oh my goodness, what a waste. At least it's not a too hard a day. It's just one of those crappy all days. You know, I'll be fine. Got this, I got these damn big gloves on. And yeah, this thing, so the, the metric Allen wrench folding toolkit um, has been the greatest addition to my toolbox that I've gotten in a long time. I mean, my God, does this make things freaking easy. It just makes things super, super easy. All right, so I, I just wanted to tighten those down because I don't want them just flopping around and, and messing up the wiring. So what we can do now, though, is take this out. Yeah, if a nice, clean, original bike being, being dismantled like that breaks my heart for sure. So we can take this, this lever off. We don't need it. And I go back to my parts and see if I can actually find these darn things. Actually, whoa, whoa, camera down. Okay, we saved it. I think I saved that. I'll give you guys a little bit of elevation here. Give you a little change up. Oh, good to hear, Ron. I will definitely keep that in mind. Um, I'm trying, you know, I, I would love to ideally do live streams every week. Um, it's just with my schedule lately and just, um, you know, other obligations that I have, every week is, it's kind of hard um, to, to do that. But hearing that, um, that means a lot. And I will definitely um, try to be better. <laughs> I guess that's all I can, pro uh, that's all I can say. I will try to be better. And the other thing I, I really do need to be better about, and I do apologize um, for you guys, is uh, I need to give you a little bit more heads up when I'm gonna live stream. And honestly, that just comes down to my own kind of personal commitment sometimes to just be like, okay, I'm really tired, I'm kinda sick of the world. Um, I really just don't wanna do this tonight. Um, so I just need to get over that. So, let's see, is there a left and a right? I don't know. Da, 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 da. I hope these work, man. Let me boom and boom and if they don't work. Let's see, how would this go? I'm trying to visualize this damn bike in my head. Which one is what? There we go, bam. <laughs> That's gonna look so pretty. That's going to look so pretty. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Bam. Freaking black bolt on that would really make it cool. Oh, I don't need a black bolt on this. I do need to find, actually, I'm just noticing this right now. Actually, let's pull this out. I'm missing a nut on the bottom here. I'm missing a nut on the bottom here. So luckily, because I have uh, started to get pretty organized as far as spare parts and tools and, and all that kind of stuff, usually all my nuts and bolts are in really good condition right now. So I should be able to find, see those are kind of big, kind of littler ones. Got all these boxes now, little drawers over here. It's kind of nice to be able to just find stuff. I thought I had some smaller ones. Maybe there are some small ones in here, but I just need something that fits this bad boy. I bet this is going to be my ticket right here, this super rusty one. Van'll do her, but then I also need a a locking washer. God, why can't there be just a nice clean one? Ooh, is this a cleaner one? Come on, come on, come, on, come here. This one's not bad. This one's really roached. 
This one's really clean. This would be amazing. Oh, it doesn't fit. Oh, that looked, that looked bad. Don't do that. So like that. There we go. So now I just need to put this drawer back. I'm getting of this little bin <laughs> and, and really getting organized with uh, nuts and bolts has made a huge difference. And over here, I've got all of my locking washers are all down here. Tula, I get that way about even working on the bike. I have to be in the right mood. Although if I don't accomplish something, at least on the weekends, I'm mad at myself totally, man. Um, yeah, yeah, I have that kind of regret, kind of like, oh, geez, I should have got off my ass and done that. Why didn't I do that? Same way, man. Um, the, like once I hit the button to go live, um, I have a blast. I have zero regrets. Um, but man, sometimes get, you know, getting to that point can be a little tough. They're perfect. So I'm going to put a good washer and a locking washer and a nut on this. Yeah, Ron, thanks for chiming in on that, man. Um, that, that I, I'm so glad that, that you said that because, you know, sometimes I'm sitting here, you know, going like, I mean, well, no, oop, well, no, but nobody's, nobody's going nobody's gonna to miss it. You know, if I don't show up tonight or, or whatever, and you guys are, are the community, and um, yeah, well, I will definitely keep that in mind, and at least give you guys a little bit better heads up of when I'm going to be doing stuff for sure. Leo, the vintage department. What's that about? Look at all the, this nice, the bowl on top here is really clean. Love that. All right, so I'm going to just do my little washer. My locking washer. I can remember in my head that, there, that there's hardware that goes on here. That's the only reason why I'm doing this. And then, okay, I was like, and I had a nut. I know I did. So let's get this going here. Nice, building a little, uh, Man cave or what? I wish my garage was like 10 feet longer. <laughs> How many of you guys think that? Probably pretty much all of us. I just use, I mean, if I only had, if I had like 10 more feet, this garage would be perfect. I'm trying to get this darn thing to go in here. Kind of being long-winded. I'm just going to put it in just like that and get it into where it needs to go. It should go in there. It should go in there a little bit more. Coming through there? Yeah, I think I'm just being impatient. Imagine that. Imagine Brian being impatient with something. Wait a second. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense at all. A lathe, yeah, that would be crazy. Guys, I'm telling you, I am like addicted to um, Scout Crafter on YouTube. If you guys have not checked out Scout Crafter, you have to. He is so good. I don't think this, this sleeve is a little bit too long. Should be a little bit shorter. You know what? I think I have another one because I've been so organized. It's worth checking. That's all throttle stuff. I swear I had one. I swear. It's also really crazy how different nuts and bolts and things like are just like, oh, yep, that's for that, that's for that. Like these small little nuances and all these different little parts. It's like immediately you're like, oh, yeah, that's the one. So what's going on here? This should just go in here. So it looks like this one over here too. I never fully got that one in place either. 
Kevy Kev, you do all your builds in your living room? Dude, you're living the freaking life, man. Um, I did most of the 72. I'd say probably half of the 72 build. Did that in, a, in an extra bedroom. Yeah, so here are these two. Ah, there is a difference. Look. The flat sleeve on this one is just a little bit too long. This one's just about right. This one needs to get cleaned up though. So let's go over here. I'm gonna hit the uh, hit the grinder here real quick. Oh, and I can also show you um, something that I just got again that I was really excited about until now I seem to have lost it. Where the hell did it go? I know I brought it down here. Ah. I freaking love this thing. It beats goggles. It beats goggles, man. Goggles always like fog up my glasses or I can't wear my glasses while I'm working on stuff. This one it's just so easy, super lightweight, and you wear it like a hat. It's a pretty crusty bolt, but it's a special bolt. And we need it, and we need the damn thing. But yeah, dude, these things are amazing. Love this thing. Fogged up a little bit, but I can see. Emmett, how you doing, buddy? Just showing off my fancy new headgear so I don't lose an eye while I'm doing all this crazy stuff. Um, I really like it, I like it. Kind of a face shield guy now, I think. All right, so here's this switch. Now this should work. Yeah, that one bolt is just too long. Did I give you guys a good enough look at that? That is just a little bit different. I wonder, does one fit in one and one get the other and maybe I got them mixed up previously? That could be. That could very well be. Boop, boop. Horn, then this, this should all go through here. Let's go back to the camera. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot to switch the camera. I'm a real pro. Bomb disposal shield. I, yeah, dude, I look like a freaking lunatic. But during COVID, I guess it's just normal looking. You know, it's not that offensive to anybody, but... But man, I feel safe and I can wear my glasses because that's really what's in bugging me. Yep, there, now that like slid right together just beautifully. And I have plenty of room for my washer, my locking washer, and my nut. Put that on there. Yeah, I... <laughs> Kevin, Kev, that's funny that you said that because I was working with my wire wheel. This was maybe a couple months ago, and I had to run to the auto parts store um, to get something. And I ran in, and I was in there. I was looking at paint, and I like brushed my forehead, and I was like, "Ow, what the hell was that?" And it ended up I had a, a wire strand sticking out of my freaking forehead. I was like, "Damn." There. Oh, I kind of over tighten that just a little bit. Doesn't have to be that extreme. But having that locking locking washer on here makes me feel a lot better. There, now that's like freaking butter. That is gonna look freaking great. Not crazy. I don't know why they put these gold adjusters on. Did the new cables come with adjusters? I hope so. And maybe they're silver. So let's see, that would be 
That'd be my clutch cable. Actually, just curious. Speed on tack, tack, clutch. Nope, so I'm gonna have to use that gold adjuster. Damn. I do have a couple of other ones here. But these are all pretty, these are kind of ratty. Got a, got a bunch of them, but. Oh, I'll keep the gold ones for now. We're a long ways away from having to make life decisions like that, so it'll be okay. How's Emmett doing? What's Emmett been up to? I'm going to try this other longer bolt on the other handle. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to try and find another one. Yeah, there's no way in hell that this is going to go. This is the wrong bolt. This is the wrong bolt for this job. 100%. Roger coming in with the common sense again. Spray it silver. I could do that. <laughs> yep. I could totally do that. Okay. I'm going to figure out this bolt later because I got to find, find the right one. This one's just too long. And I know there's one in that bin. I saw one. I know I have one. Oh, it looks like I missed some stuff from Leo up here. Uh-oh. It's sized. I need to hone the walls. Uh, it's so cool to hear. Yeah, everything but the engine. Totally, Leo. Man, it is so awesome to hear people building these things in their bedrooms, living rooms, houses, basements, all of that. I love hearing about that because that's exactly how I started. Um, and it's an awesome winter project. Like a friend of mine, I was, I was talking to him about kind of what, what we're doing and and he's like, well, it's kind of like you're just into like adult model kits. And I was like, you know, that's kind of exactly what this is. Like instead of building plastic airplanes, um, we're doing like full-sized, life-sized adult model building. <laughs> I thought that was a good way to kind of look at it. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm just fascinated to see um, how this is actually going to roll. So again, should we try this? Maybe this will be our, our hurrah for the night to see if we can get this through the bar. Which one did I do? Oh, I did the right one. I'd have to do the hard one first. I would have to do the hard one first. I want to make sure I got that all cleaned off. Yeah, it doesn't feel sharp. It doesn't feel sharp. Yeah, people can do this stuff. People can do this stuff. It is not rocket science. So I think what I'll do, I'm going to get the Dawn. Dump a little Dawn in. And just start rotating this. Let that stuff kind of roll down. What I'd like to do is just get like one side of this together tonight, you know, and just be like, hey, I would dump it right down this hole here because that's really the direction I'm going to have to go. Actually, God damn, I can't do it yet because I haven't cut this out. So I got to cut this out before I can do any of this. Oh, my dreams are going to be dashed tonight. So I, just, I don't have that in me tonight to go and do, do this because I have to go back out to the shop, cut that, get that going to go. Tobias, restoring a Honda 550T76. Awesome, man. Feeling the Christmas essence. Metal jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> That's exactly it. Yeah, I can't do this right now because I got I to gotta go back out to the shed. I, I totally forgot that I would have to cut this out too. Um, but man, earlier in the live stream, man, I, I think we crushed this. I think this went really, 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 really well. <laughs> I'm pleased with that. But yeah, I can't, can't really muck with this right now. So I'm going to dump this Dawn out before 
<sighs> getting ahead of myself, getting ahead of myself. You guys ever get ahead of yourselves when you're working on these damn bikes? I mean, these amazing vintage motorcycles that deserve all of our love. Oh, Tobias had a question about the triple tree reinstallation. Go for it. Let's see if we can help. Let's see if we can help. How do I reinstall the lower triple tree without losing the ball bearings every time? Uh, well, <laughs> I've actually avoided that tragic effort uh, because I've always upgraded to the, the roller bearings. But I would imagine um, if I were to try it, I think I would be using a lot of grease and like really piling on the grease just to hold the balls in position. I think if I had to do it, that's kind of what I would be doing. Anybody got any tips for, for Tobias? Yeah, yeah, just pack it with grease. Yeah, that whole thing should be packed with grease anyway, and the, and grease is really sticky. So I think that would be your best bet. You just got to grease that all up. I know it's always nice when it rains ball bearings when you pull that apart. Hey, here's a, here's a good trivia question actually too. Yeah, give it a try, Tobias. That'll work for you for sure. Just use a lot of grease. Um, and look at this. This is why the freaking keep on wrenching community is, is, is just so amazing. It's like, boom, people jumping in, trying to fix your problems, you know, and, and, and all your issues and stuff. So it's like, you know, if you haven't already, please, um, you know, go one, go sign up for the email newsletter on keeponwrenching.com. That would be huge. Um, and then just the keep on wrenching community. we got that hanging out here too. And we got a new member request. Let's go check that out. Who do we got? Kevin. Two hours ago, oh my God, I'm sorry I took so damn long um, to approve that request. You are in, man. I just saw it. Let me see. Oh, there's my feed. Oh, yay. Okay. Yeah, what's the deal with, with uh, Facebook stories? I, I really, fuck, I hate them. I think they're so annoying. So we're up to 45 members now in the Keep On Wrenching community, which is awesome. Terrence got himself some new tires. Santa came early. Excited about that. This timing chain thing, David. David's a really active member, man. He he is. This guy goes next level, and he's he's going all in. He jumped in, all the way, and he's doing some amazing stuff. And the feedback and the help that's coming in on this is um, is great. Jules Freeman, you're crushing it in 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 the group as well. And we're talking about sandblasting frames. Oh. <laughs> The uh, trivia question is, how many ball bearings are there? How many ball bearings go in those races? Yeah, keep on wrenching, guys, if you haven't. Oh, we got one right away. Bam. Oh, maybe that was just something else. Oh, I got my hopes up. I, thought, I was like, oh, my God, I promoted, and it worked. Amazing. But that wasn't the case. All good. All good. There are 17. Awesome. Thank you, Tobias. I actually didn't know the answer. I was just hoping you would give it to me. I didn't know the answer. I've always like meant to like count them when I take them out or go check the manual and see what that is, but I just never have. So you saved me a trip on having to do that. Man, I'm kind of bummed. Kind of bummed. It's going to have to wait until tomorrow, I think, um, to, to try and finish this stuff up. It's going to look freaking cool. Oh, oh, we can do one thing, though. We can do one thing, at least. So this is my left switch. I would need my left mirror. Make sure this thing works. Please fit. Please. Oops. Please fit. Please fit. It fits. Thank God. I'd be crushed if it didn't fit. Yeah, this is a really this is a really solid group of group of people um, that we have uh, in this group. It's super fun. 
I just, I'm, now I'm kind of just plain. Do you guys ever just play with your, your parts? <laughs> I knew what I said as soon as it came out of my mouth. I, 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 it's not what I meant. You know what I meant. You know what I meant. You guys know what I meant. Get your head. Oh, 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 God. Everything's falling. I just want to see what it's going to look like with my adult model kit. Yeah, that's, this is going to look so damn cool, guys. How do I get this? Oop. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah. Oh man, I'm excited about this. I cannot, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting this all sealed up. Oh, that's just grease. I was like, well, there better not be a scratch in that. Same number, top and bottom. Awesome. And it's 17. Perfect. We now know. We, we have now expanded our knowledges. Yeah, I didn't ever count mine. I never did. They all fell on the floor before I could even find them all. That's what I, uh, the all balls, that's what I got, uh, that's what I installed on this one were the all balls tapered roller bearings. I got those at four and a one and dude, they were, they were cheap. They, they, they were really inexpensive. They, they were, it was less than, I think it was less than $20 if I remember right. I've been really digging the four into one stuff. Um, and they ship freaking fast too. Let me go over there. But I'm really curious about this old bike barn. <clears throat> old bike barn. Yeah, I'm so hesitant. Like I'm, I'm starting to get hesitant about ordering parts from, from Amazon or eBay. Like not like, you know, replacement parts, like original parts. I don't have any problem with that on eBay. But man, some of the stuff that they, like the, the stuff I've gotten from eBay sometimes is just miserable. It's like really cheap. It's probably all the same stuff. I'm probably just being paranoid, but. And I swear that there's some things that I buy on Amazon <clears throat> that say that they're like the official, ooh, Jonathan Bennett just subscribed. That's awesome. Man, the, 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 the freaking alerts are working tonight. That is awesome. So that means the YouTube channel got another subscription. And uh, that's awesome. And the MacGyver freaking sounder went off. <laughs> that is awesome. Welcome to the group. That is awesome. That is so cool. The, the sounders have not ever worked. Um, so something must have updated. Yeah, ball bearings are pretty much the same. I bet they, yeah, you're, 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 you're probably right. Uh, no, Roger, you're not probably right. You, you are right. <clears throat> so let's go here. All right. So... Da, 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 da. Try to just remember how much I paid for these. Oh, if I could not... What were they? Front wheel, all wheel. I forget what they were called, were they tapered? Tapered something, God, what were they called? Oh, here they are, all balls, steering bearing kit. I don't remember it being that much. That's for a CB350? You know what I did? I think I, I think I was wrong. I think I did all ball wheel bearings, and I think I did get the knockoff one because I think there's another one. Oh man, I got to do this again. 
No, I don't, I, I don't want to do this again. There was a cheaper one. I think I might have bought the cheaper one. So it was like 50 bucks. Check out any members while we're here. Yeah, but this, here's the other one that... Oh, whoa. Eric Bell, thanks for subscribing to the channel. Firing off that uh, MacGyver alert. Gotta love MacGyver. MacGyver was my... Um... Yep, Tula, totally right. Um, MacGyver was my childhood hero, uh, for sure. I think I've seen every episode at least a half a dozen times over the years. Um, I was a MacGyver freak. He was the, he was the shiz when I was growing up, man. Um, yeah, MacGyver. And plus, we do a lot of MacGyverizing around here, um, for sure. So, Sweet, man. Thanks for joining. Thanks for the sub, man. I love the subs. The, the, the subscriptions mean a lot. There comes another one, Nigel Fenton. He just subscribed too. This is fantastic. This is insane. Um, thanks so much, man. Um, I'm going to keep the content pumping. <laughs> keep it coming out. Leo, he just subscribed as well. Whoa, dude, we're just crushing it tonight. This is amazing. This is fantastic, man. Uh, you, you guys are pushing me uh, towards these goals that I have um, really, 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 really quickly. <laughs> awesome. Oh, man, that puts such a smile on my face when you guys uh, do that stuff. Thank you so much. Um, here's the site that I'm curious about, oldbikebarn.com. It looks pretty legit. I just have never done any business with them. And I'm curious if any of you ha have done any business with them. They have a lot of like merch. Oh, but where was it? Um, the, the model specific Honda 350F, uh, CB, where was it? CB 350CL, there it is. So like, here's all these parts that they've got. There's a never buy this manual. Never. This, this manual is the most worthless freaking book on the planet. What a, what a joke. What a freaking joke. That manual is terrible. Nigel, you're doing adult toy, toy rebuilds as well? Good for you. We're, we're, we're in this together, man. We're all working through this stuff. Um, <laughs> adult toy rebuilds. Oh, God. What is the matter with us? So look at this though. So they've got stator kits, coils for $31. Um, there's another thing I saw that I almost ordered it. Um, yeah, so here's front bearing kits for like 16 and 15. Like that's really cheap. I think I've been dramatically overspending on some things that maybe I don't need to. Um, pegs, all the different brackets. All the cables, what else do they have? Oh, there's page two. What else they got? Sprockets, CB and CBF350. Okay, so the CB350F and the CL350 must have that same larger sprocket. Interesting, I didn't know that. Bunch of different shocks, all this stuff. I, I'd be curious, man, if any of you have um, have done business with them before. Like, here's a here's a battery, you know, sixty five dollars. The common motor one's like one hundred and ten dollars. Like, why would you need? I I suppose maybe you need an ignition nut tool, but it's it's not that hard to to get those off of there. Be curious. Old bike barn. They had something. Oh, I want to show you this. Yeah, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. It's getting kind of late over here. Um, but I wanted to see. I think it was in here. Here's that that cable luber. It's kind of a fun thing to say. Engine stands. I've got one for a CB350. This. How freaking cool is this? Not for $74. Like, no, I'm not buying that. But that's pretty damn cool. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. A tool roll. Thought that was neat. 
Anyway, why are we looking at this? See, we'll see what we got. Any new member requests come in for the Keep On Wrenching group? Nothing new. Let's go back to home, though. Maybe people are posting things and showing us things. I got an email I got to check on from Roger. I will get right on that. Yes, Roger, you made my day. You have a rear seat rack. Yes. It'll be amazing. Let's see. All right, God, we've been going for two hours, 36 minutes. We've been going. And again, if you have not already, um, be sure to go to keeponwrenching.com. All right. Keeponwrenching.com and sign up for the monthly e-newsletter that's going to start in January. Right, I'm going to just start putting together something useful for everybody. So, uh, so go check that out. How time is it? Ooh, it's 11 o'clock at night. Getting late, guys. It's getting late. Look at how nice that motorcycle looks behind me, though. <laughs> that pinstripe job made all the difference. I'm so glad I went, I, I went ahead and did that. Tobias, one more question. Go for it, dude. David Silver, I want to look at their website too. I've always thought their stuff seems so expensive whenever I was over there. But I did, I had to order um, cylinder base O-rings from David Silver Spares. And it was like two rubber O-rings. And it was like $20, you know, for two rubber O-rings. And... Uh, I just couldn't believe it. But yes, that's another option out there. Roger, Tobias, Google or look in your manual. We'll tell you the size and then just hop on eBay. Size of what? Oh, steering bearings. Um, is Common Motor doing 500s now? They might have it. Check Common Motor for sure. I think, are they doing 500s now? I, I think they are. They're expanding, they, they're, they're moving out. They're, they're taking on more than the 350s. Yeah, dude, it was like $10 for the O-rings. It was $10 for shipping with David Silver. But some of their parts are the cheapest out there. Interesting. I'll have to give them another look. Um, though I think I just got a bad taste in my mouth from the O-rings. I was like $20 for two rubber O-rings, really? Um, okay, so what was I doing? Okay, how do I get the rear spring shock suspension apart? How do I separate the spring from the shock? I didn't think that they even came apart. Yeah, yeah, generally you just replace the shocks. Yeah, I, exactly. I, that's, that's the most common thing. You just replace the shock. As far as I know, um, the shocks aren't really serviceable. I wish they were. I wish they were serviceable because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I have ten old shocks. And they're just heavy. And they're awkward and they're really useless. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't think you could really rebuild them. If you can, that would be another video, I guess to learn how to rebuild some of those shocks. Oh, you just want to paint them. Do they have a shroud on them? Or do they have like a, the metal shroud over them? Or are they like open spring? Like the, like the, uh, the black beauties I have for this bike. What the hell did I do with those? Oh. This is that other aspect of this bike that I love. I, got, I went with that all black shock. It's gonna look cool. Yeah, Nigel, it's interesting that it's like, nobody has it all. <laughs> you know, nobody has it all. Like somebody might have, um, so somebody might have the, the rubber grommet, but they don't have the chrome cover or something. So yeah, man, you need to like source parts in a lot of different places. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it can be kind of frustrating sometimes for sure. I mean, I, I probably check eBay at least at a minimum every other day for new parts being posted uh, randomly. 
but I don't buy a lot of like new parts from eBay. I don't think I ever have. I just don't, I just question the quality sometimes. I just, I, I don't know. And that, I could, that could totally just be, you know, me being douchey, but I, I sometimes I just don't. Uh, Roger, you can rebuild them. You need a coil spring compressor tool. So I have to go buy another tool. Darn. <laughs> yeah, the all black. Yeah, Tobias, the black's gonna look great. Yeah, I this on this bike is gonna look. Um, it's gonna look really, really good. Huh. Coil spring compression tool. Yeah, I mean, if it's if it's there, just I, I would say just paint it. I mean, try to can you. Like put, um, I wonder if you could, how would we do that? Let me look at that again. Because you definitely don't want to paint, you, you don't want to paint the inside, you know, shaft there. But I wonder if you could um, get like a, a straw might be too small, but I was thinking like cut a straw down this side and like get it in there and cover that up. Or, or maybe just even just, just pushing some, some paper in there and then touch it up afterwards. Hmm. Make it, I could make one, Nigel. I imagine you just need a, a few bolts like two bolt, two bolts and like a thing, something to just pull that all together. It'd have to be pretty long though, and then it would pull it all the way down. But I mean, I like shopping for things. I like I like new tools. I like to learn new stuff. I mean, I bought all the a ton of tools uh, for these bikes already, and I've, I've used most of them. Some of them I was just like, that looks too complicated. I'll just do it this way. Man. Feeling it. What else is going on, guys? Any other questions or anything? We should try to take one apart sometime. We should totally try and take one apart. Because it would be cool. I mean, if you could rebuild the original shocks, like if some of them are in good shape. The problem is, is that usually they're just trash. I have so many of them. Where did I go to school? Did I go to school? Yeah, I went to school. I am originally from Minnesota. That is where I gained my educational prowess. But I didn't go to school for motorcycles. I don't know anything about motorcycles. I'm learning every day with you guys on this whole motorcycle bit. And then we have people like Roger in here who just answers all the questions. So I had a bar hook bracket at each end. Yep, that's what I was trying to explain by saying you put bolts or something in there and you make it all squeezed together. <laughs> oh, parts availability would be an issue. Yeah, they probably don't make that stuff, right? The other thing I've been thinking about too was like trying to cross-reference part numbers from different distributors and seeing like, are they selling the same parts or are they actually different? Or are they all being sourced from the same spot? I mean, I don't know, but that's all, that's all stuff that, uh, that, that we start thinking about when we're working on these damn bikes, right? Are these lovely vintage motorcycles that deserve a second chance? That's what it's all about. Yeah, man. I don't know, I feel like this was a damn good stream. This has been so much fun. <laughs> Kevy Kev came in with the super chat. That was amazing. Thank you so much for that. And we got a ton of new subs on the channel as well. Um, that is fantastic. I should check. Let me check my phone here real quick. Wherever my phone may have disappeared to. What the hell did I do with my phone? Oh, yeah, because I still have to edit that video that we shot earlier, too. 
Um, just let's check the channel here real quick. And let's see. Yeah, wow, 5,118. I was at, I was at 5,106 when the stream started. So 12 new subs, man, um, during the stream. That's awesome. Um, not all of them fired. Not sure why that would be the case, but whatever. It's all good, man. Happy to see that stuff. Um, blah, 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 blah. Parts availability, I meant for motorcycles. Oh, but I appreciate it. it sounds cold there. Yeah, no, it's cold. It's, it's like wintry here now. It's like full-on wintry here. Kind of blue. Yeah, the boot tray, it does, it just keeps things kind of in one place. Because, again, I'm, I'm in my basement, so I don't want to be super messy. I don't really uh, do, I do work on an engine down here uh, if I have to. Um, but any oil, gas, anything like that stays out in the garage for sure. But, yeah, uh, Tobias, honestly, um, get a manual. Get a manual. Where's that manual that I, that I love so much? Here it is. Right by the bike. Isn't that crazy? It's like laying right by the bike because I was looking at it the other day. Get this book. If you can find this book, get this book. I'm going to um, scan this in and uh, just have a PDF on keeponwrenching.com here eventually. This is the book you want. Honda 350-360 Twins Repair and Tune-Up Guide 68-75. That's what you want. That's what you want. Oh, shit, Tobias coming in. Two bucks through the super chat, dude. Firing off the Jack Bauer emoji. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Tobias, man. It's been awesome to have you in the stream tonight. It's been really, really good. This is where I would start on the education front. It's a Chilton. I help you find the right one. Chilton Book Company. What year was this? Copyright 1975 Chilton Book Company. Honda 350 360 Twins Repair and Tune-Up Guide. That's what you want, man. Thank you so much for the tip. Um, <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible. Thank you so much. It's badass. Yeah. The gray black color scheme is sick on this bike. Yeah, Richard, I'm I'm in I'm in like with it. Every time I come down uh, down the basement for something random or whatever, and I kind of peek behind the curtain and I look at it and I'm like, damn, that hits. And that again, that pinstripe, the the pinstripe is what made this all come together because I, I wasn't gonna do anything else to it. Let me just go show this to you. But then I kind of convinced myself to give this pinstripe a try. And it came out so good. It really did. And this whole bike is, um, this, this thing's clean. This thing has been clean. Every, 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 every step of the way, I mean, everything has been touched. Everything's been cleaned. I mean, I just put a finger, uh, a finger mark on that. Now I'm like frustrated. I want to wipe it off. This is going to be a really clean, beautiful motorcycle, but this made all the difference. The pinstripe made all the difference. That brought it all together. And this is a little detail down here, this little loop up. That did it. And I was, on, I was actually on Pinterest, don't judge me. Um, I was on Pinterest looking at some bikes, and I saw a very similar pinstripe like that on on a Honda. Uh, I forget. I, I think I pinned it on one of my boards. Ooh, ISBN number. Good, good fucking good point. Where are you? Oh, God. I can barely read these days. It's so sad. Let's see, would that be? Yeah, okay. ISBN 0-8019-6037-1. Ooh, good, good, good call, Kevy Kev. I can do that, too. I would love you guys to come to my website, though. 
I could put it in there too. <laughs> yeah, so uh, 0-8019-6037-1. That looks like that's the ticket right there. And again, it's the, uh, looks like that has that couple on the front. Yeah, I, I forget what it was. I think I saved it to a board, I think, on Pinterest. And I was like, damn, I could have been a Honda designer. Because I, I did not see that before. And I was like, cool. So it kind of made me feel good that it all kind of fits right in. It's, a, it's not like too out there or anything. It was very, very, very similar. So Nigel, did you get that number? So you can look at that manual. Be sweet. Kevy Kev. Great suggestion. Um, we will, um, I gotta get it scanned, that's the only thing, so. But that won't be too hard. I got a fast scanner thing, I just gotta break the bind, dude. Ooh, sorry about that, yawning, getting tired, guys. Let's see, do, 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 do. anything else? Man, uh, like, we got all the usual suspects seem to have appeared tonight. Um, Let's see, the bread maker guy, he didn't show up tonight. That's too bad. And yeah, Trent, Trent. Yeah, Trent didn't show up tonight, but man, all the usual suspects showed up tonight. And we got a ton of new people in chat. Yeah, I'm thinking about the side panels, whether or not I'm gonna do it. I gotta, I gotta look, I gotta see it all together um, to, to see what I'm gonna do there. Um, but yeah, Nigel, I got plenty of, I got plenty of pinstripe, man. I got. A ton. I ordered way too much. <laughs> I, I could I could do probably fifteen tanks with uh, with the amount that I have. I have a ridiculous amount. Uh, but yeah, I really enjoyed the pinstripe part. Um, I thought that was a blast. Richard, hell yeah, Brian! You should start a database of manuals for all of us to have access to. Good idea, bro. Well, Common Motor does it has a really good database of different manuals for sure. Like they're, they're on their website. Um, and a lot of the other face, Facebook groups have manuals in their files section. They're all there. Um, they're out there. Um, but yeah, I, I plan on compiling. What I want to do with the keeponwrenching.com is just make it, I don't know, just what I think is helpful. I guess like, I don't know, just using my, my judgment of like what I thought was really helpful. I got a bunch of like links to to websites to look up VIN numbers, to find all of these things, all of it. So yeah, I'm just trying to bring it all together. Simple ideas escalate quickly and simple ideas are usually the most effective and they're easier to execute. I really hate complexities. It's, it seems like such a waste. I get very frustrated with it sometimes. Just keep it simple. Um, and the best things come, come out of those types of things. Yeah, Honda Twins, vintage Honda Twins have a ton of, yeah, they're out there on these other groups for sure. I think I downloaded a bunch of resources from Common Motor Collective's website when I first started, um, but then I bought this book, and this book, especially, especially with working with carburetors and, and doing the, the uh, top end rebuild on the 72, this book was invaluable. The amount of detail it went into, the step-by-step, -step, all of it was just fantastic. Yeah, this book, it's a winner. It's a winner. I like it a lot, guys. We did cool stuff tonight. We did cool stuff tonight. I'm actually going to finish editing the video that we shot live on stream. <laughs> so if you weren't here for that, um, go dial back to the beginning of the live stream. I thought that was a lot of fun to kind of get a glimpse behind the scenes a little bit about how I'm producing these videos. Um, but I got to do a quick few little edits to that, and then I'm going to upload that. So hopefully that'll be live uh, by the morning, and we'll, we'll, we'll be good to go there. This is amazing. This is a really good stream. I, I had a blast. I'm so glad I came on tonight. I, I really, really am. I was... I was bumming a little bit, but I, I do think I just have to kind of remember that uh, this is fun stuff, and I'm hanging out with a lot of really smart people um, that are sharing good ideas and it's making everybody better. So it's 
awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm feeling it. I got to edit a video, got to upload that, got to do a lot of stuff. So I think I'm going to call this stream at two hours and 55 minutes. I think that's what we're going to do. Um, remember, keeponwrenching.com, monthly newsletter. That's all I'm going to send you. I'm going to send you an email a month, okay? And it's going to be super, super easy to deal with, okay? Um, that'll be key. The other thing, if you have not already, join the Facebook group. Keep on wrenching community group. Um, I love this thing. I love seeing the alerts pop up on my phone and people communicating. Um, it's just, it's fun. It, it makes it super, super, super fun. Um, I really want to thank uh, the donations today as well. Um, Tobias, thank you, $2. I, that's huge. You guys don't have to do that, but man, it is very much appreciated. And, uh, you know, it's... It's just awesome. And then Kevy Kev, can't thank you enough, man. You've been awesome on the stream tonight, and the $5 donation was huge. Go ahead and replace that spilled beer, bro, was the message you sent with that. I'm on it. <laughs> I'm on it, man. On it. All right. Thanks, Nigel. Thanks for hanging out. Hope to see you on a future stream again. I'm going to get out of here. Um, Richard, thanks for being here. Kevy Kev, thanks for being here. Tula, it's always good to see you, Tula. Uh, Richard, we got, oh my God, this, this is an amazing, amazing stream. Richard, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I'm going to be on before Christmas for sure. Uh, I know, like, the, I think it was two weeks ago that I did my last, last deal. So, Nigel, if you can't do Facebook, sign up for the newsletter. That, that, that's the thing. Go to keeponwrenching.com, sign up for the, for the newsletter. Awesome. Later, man. Tobias. I, I don't know. Guys, I'm tired. <laughs> we, we did stuff today, and I've got a lot of um, a, a lot of kind of cleanup and work to do. So thank you so much for watching the stream. Thank you for the support of the channel. Thanks for spreading the word. Um, and just thanks for, for, for helping build a really awesome community because, I don't know, I think we got something good here. And, uh, you know, I'm going to do my best to just kind of keep moving it kind of forward and We'll, we'll see what we can do. But the, the most important part, man, you, you, anybody who's watching the stream right now is kind of a founding member of what we're trying to do here at Keep On Wrenching. So you guys have a special, special little place right there. I'm telling you. All good. All right. Oh, man, I'm a minute and a half from <laughs> a three-hour live stream. Do I hold out for a minute and a half? Nah, I think it's good. Let's call it a night, guys. I will see you in the next video or live stream. Have a great evening. Be safe. 